Cats, go live, go live. Hello, guys. <clears throat> oh, that's right. StreamYard reverses everything. Let's see who's here. Well, I get the laptop ready because I'm a little late. Turn that off. Anybody out there? You guys will show up eventually, I know. There we go. Hello, Rebecca, Nettie, Sharon. I'm running a little late. Interesting. I have no comments on the phone. Oh, there they are. Violet. I don't think I know Violet. Hello. <sighs> oh, Sharon, it's your headache night. It's my night after the cardiologist. And forgive the hat hair. I've had my hat on most of today. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I was like, you know, I've had that my hat on for a long while. I need to get that off a little bit. I literally was writing numbers and writing out that list right up to five minutes ago, <laughs> getting ready for the sale. So, you know, the, uh, the cardiologist visit was not fun. I don't know what he heard. I don't know what the EKG said, but he wasn't happy. I think it's all just stress, but, um, Congestive heart failure runs in the family with women in my family. So uh, I suddenly had myself shoved down the hallway to imaging for an x-ray and, uh, and then wired up again. So it was real fun. And I have to go back next week. They did a, a, chemical, they did a chemical stress test, which tires you out. And then I have to go back next week and do do the physical stress test. So he's worried. I think it's just too much stress with everything, with the heater, with, you know, Gandalf and. <sighs> I have some heat emancipation. I have heat to the back third of the house. So the part I'm sitting in is there is a heater back there that's getting some heat but um one there's a bureau in front of it which is gonna go but it's such a huge room that that heat just goes up and just kind of dissipates into the whole big room oh sorry got my arm in the way um my son's room which is the other master bedroom of the house actually is the only room it's not the only room in the house with you, but it's the only bedroom in the house has two radiators and it's on the south side. His room gets toasty warm. The last two nights, because he's had to work third shift, I've slept in his room because it was this pin is not saying, but because it was so nice and warm. Do I get weakness at times? Um, no, but I've been getting this tightness, not at the breastbone, but around it. And I've also not had enough rest. I've also not had enough water. And, you know, I'm also overweight. <laughs> That's not helping. And there is, there is a big, uh, my great grandmother, my grandmother, my mother all had congestive heart failure. Um, so I know my grandmother and my mother were in and out of the hospital several times. My mother had almost killed her the first time she had it. So, what the heck is in my pocket? Oh, stickers are in my pocket. Oh, I was going to look. Hmm. I'm not doing it now. <laughs> I was going to look for the Dachshund stickers and see if you guys wanted to buy them for junk journaling. So, anyway, it also can be, like, I feel like somebody's, like, digging their knuckles underneath the shoulder blades, like, in the center of my back. And it could also be that, because when that part of your back is out, you, you just, it's hard to sleep well. So it could all just be that. I do have some good news. Uh, Perfecting Pearls had gotten in hold of Philly Flipper, and he's in my area, and he has a warehouse area, and he has, bless his heart, he has agreed to 
um, let me store some stuff at his place so that I can clear stuff out of the way to the radiators that they have to get to if and when they come and do the heater. I still have not heard that they are definitely replacing it for me. So, but right now it, it runs. Um, it only runs and gets heat to, to six radiators total. But, you know, there's no pump. So the only heat is going because of gravity, which is why it's only getting to that back part of the house because it's the smaller of the loops. The 1911 part is two thirds of the house and it's just too big a loop for it to really make any, any, uh, way around it. I know that's wonderful. A Philly flipper. Actually, I should, let me go find his channel. He's a young guy, but he does, um, he bought storage units. He's also, he's also done, cl uh, clean outs. Um, of houses, I think, if I remember right from one of his. And here is Paul's. I'll put because he has an odd spelling. Whoops. <laughs> that didn't go where I wanted it to go. Let me fix that. Okay. If you're in if I could spell it right. How do I spell it? 1L. Okay. I got two. There we go. If you're in the Philadelphia area, it's a thing in this area to spell things with a PH as the F. So he has Philly Flipper spelled with that. So... Yeah, I mean, it, it could be inflammation in my chest. So I'm not super worried about it. I've had it before. I know it comes up if I don't keep myself hydrated. If I, um, you know, if, if the allergies are getting to me, I tend to get a little congested, but it's a different thing when it's the congestion in the, in the tubes. So this isn't in the tubes. It's too far inset, but... I think it's just not enough water and not enough proper sleep and too much stress. So, but yeah, Philly Flipper is going to let me get stuff there. I'm going to try to get the first car load over to him. And I was explaining to him that a lot of stuff of where it's got to be moved from isn't necessarily boxed up. So it's going to be busy because I have to work tomorrow night and I have to work Sunday night. So it's going to be a very tiring, busy weekend. And then I have to be back at the, the, the doctor's vet appointment. I kept thinking it was last week. It's, it's this coming week. And then I have to be back at the, uh, I've got another week and then I have to be back at the cardiologist. So yeah, it's fun. <laughs> It's just fun. So, so let's uh let's get the ball rolling so we can get to the Easter goodies. Cause I've got I've got my tea. And yeah, Philly Flipper's name is Paul. It's funny as I was thinking about him anyway, was I driving out this morning um we passed two two uh wooden chairs and i'm going they're looking perfect shape that's the kind of thing he'd grab i can't do that because i can't get anybody to come pick stuff up from me off of facebook marketplace so yep so bless his little heart so and i'm gonna i'm gonna do one of those win-win things he has a challenge he's doing called Rags to Riches. And it's they're all short little videos, but it's a great little playlist to watch, especially if you are interested in ways to make money off of Facebook Marketplace. Go watch Philly Flipper's Rags to Riches series. And he's well on his way to his goal. 
And I am going to help him with his goal because I want to get rid of that bureau. <laughs> it's, it's actually, it's a chest of drawers because it's one of the, it's about, it's this high. I'm sitting down. So it's one, two, it's five drawers high. And I want that thing gone. <laughs> so, so I'll, I'll help him with his rags to riches. He can have that for free for the storage. <laughs> I a couple other things too. So so that'll that'll be a big help cuz it'll help him and it'll help me. He's definitely helping me already. I've lost my pen. So where the devil did I? I have. I've totally lost the pen. And this sweater is shedding all over the place. It's warm. But it's just losing everything. Darn it, I like that fine point pen. It's very hard to find fine point pens. All right, give me a second. I have to find another pen. I don't want the red one because those are color coded. Ah, there we go. I had that pen too. I don't know how I lost that that fast. But that's that's been my day for the last several days. I sit something down and I'm just losing where the heck I'm putting anything. It's what happens when you get too much on your mind. So, so yep. So follow that link and subscribe to Paul at Philly Flipper. It's a great channel. He is a lot of fun. And he has he has some vintage stuff, but he also has more modern stuff because he does storage units and clean outs. Because you do do clean outs, don't you? Oh, the the TWA travel posters. Yeah, I know. Well, I used to work at an art museum that specialized in illustrate has a whole gallery that's just for illustration art. So I've learned quite a few illustrators and travel posters are some great illustrators, especially if you find the early ones from the 30s from the WPA, the Works Progress Administration, which was helping put people to work. Um, there are some fabulous artists that did stuff for that. So, so let's see. Yeah, you do a little everything, don't you? <laughs> All right. Um, let's let's get this ball rolling here. This isn't necessarily old, but it is it is brand new. It is uh, one of those premium house flags, and it says "Welcome" and has what looks like dragonflies over daisies. It's never been out of the package. The artist who did it is Deb Grogan for Briarwood Lane. So um, I was looking these up, and, and apparently the Briarwood Lane ones are on the pricey side. So, but I want, didn't know if anybody would want this one since it's not vintage, but it is, it is a nice hope for spring kind of thing. You know, it's really cute, and it's in the original packaging, and it's seven dollars. And for that price, that's that's about half of what a brand new one is. So it's number forty-eight, and it's seven dollars. Tuck that back in there, and another. Where's this? No, there it is. Another more modern thing I have is I picked this up. Well, I didn't pick it up. I found it in the box. It's never been out of the box. It's just one of those brain teasers. So if you know somebody who um, likes little, uh, little logic puzzles of how to undo these... I remember getting these as a kid, but they were a lot smaller. The pieces were to only be about that big. And these are a lot bigger and easier to handle. 
but it's all just it's new in the box it's called brain teasers who made this 2017 from merch source of irvine california it is made in china but it's brand new in the box and that's six dollars and it's number nine six dollars number nine for those little and it's all those little metal puzzles that interlock together <laughs> katie your stomach has recovered from the jello <laughs> i felt so bad the minute you said you were gonna put that cucumber in your mouth because i know you don't like cucumber i don't like cucumber i would never cucumber doesn't like me either this pin keeps falling so i'm not gonna get to wear this tonight hey maybe you guys from canada can tell me are those like the canadian province flags or something because I've had this, I don't even know where I got this. I think I picked it up at a flea market somewhere because I thought it looked cool for fall. But I don't know what all those little tiny flags are. And I wondered if it was the province flags for Canada or not. I don't know. <laughs> I just know that's a Union Jack dead smack in the middle. But I don't know what the others are. So. Yeah, it is a neat pin, but I just don't know. Uh, I don't know where I even, I'm pretty sure I picked it up from. Okay, so it is, it is all Canadian stuff, right? All right, I have a stack of postcards here. Now, the first ones are, um, they, they look like they came out of somebody's scrapbook. Because even though there's writing on the back, um, they all have this weird, this one has some weird markings. And then this one has, you can see where there's some glue came off of it. And on the back of the two of them, it says, bought at the world's largest yard sale. This was bought in, I can't read, Mintone, Alabama. And whoever bought it, bought it in August of 2010. But they are they are older postcards. Now that one, now what this one has some writing across the top in red that's fading. And while it looks like a hand tinted card, I think it's a reproduction of a hand tinted card. Because if it were a hand tinted card, it would be linen paper and it's not, it's just regular card stock. But that was their dining room. Um, Genuine Kurtex Chicago American Art Postcard, but it doesn't give a year. And they were printed in Galena, Illinois. And then that's, see, that's again, that's, that's a copy of what would have been an old linen card. And then this one, this one's a photograph card. It's not the same company that made it, but this one is one of him and his family. So I don't know if any, uh, you know, American history buffs are out there or Civil War buffs who would be interested in general Ulysses S. Grant stuff. But you get the three of them for $4 and it's number 16. $4, number 16 for the three Ulysses S. Grant. Here's some Grant trivia. He started the Secret Service. And if it hadn't been for Mark Twain, his family would have been destitute when he died. Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens made arrangements to get people to come and sit with him when he was dying of throat cancer and start taking down his memoirs because there was no presidential um, honorarium at that point. 
you just retired and whatever money and he had a small pension um somehow his pension was very small from the war and not everybody got them so that was also something they pushed in congress as well but uh if it hadn't been for um these because back then you would subscribe that you were going to buy this book and you would sell a book by subscriptions and it would only get printed if you had enough subscriptions. And Samuel Clemens got it to um, where they had enough money made from those that it was printed three times over. There's a great book called Mark and um, called Grant and Twain. And it's, it's all about that. I don't think I saw anything go by for anyone wanting that one. So that's okay. Now the next one. The next one is a vintage poster, a postcard from 1911. And it has forget-me-nots and Lily of the Valleys. And it says good luck on the front. Now on the back... It was, it says Warsaw, but I can't tell. It was sent to New, Ithaca, New York, but I don't can't tell the state. But it was postmarked. There is an old stamp on the back. It says, I hear you are taking borders. Is it the young lady that rooms in the house? I didn't understand you were going to Cornell to make, didn't I understand that you were going to Cornell to make money? I can't always read all of it, but they went to some fair the night before, said there was quite a crowd. And I can't, uh, it's so tiny. Guess who's getting worse all the time? Clarence is growing. Now he doesn't. Now he sleeps through the night, but is up most of the day. So there must have been a little one. So it has um, a little bit of a crease to the corner right up here, um, and it is used, but it is cool. 1911 postcard, and this one is five dollars for the good luck postcard. And it is number number 19. Number 19 for the good luck vintage postcard from 1911. Sharon, see, you put down five, which was the asking amount. Okay, there we go. Now, um, this one's an offer up. Now, one, because they're Easter. Two, because they're in fantastic shape. And they're a matched pair from the same artist, from the same publisher, but they are just slightly different. Um, this one has a joyful Easter. And this one says, best Easter wishes. They are embossed, and I don't know that you can see that. I don't know how to make it so you can see that, but these are gorgeous. Um, I don't think it'll show on the back either, but they are, maybe it will, they are embossed, which you just don't find that often. They have been written on in the back. There's no creases. There's no dirt marks on the front. They're in beautiful, beautiful condition. Um, the back, they were made in Germany. And I can't read that. That little tiny logo I've never seen before. Those are, it's a circle with some letters inside, but it has angel wings on either side. I love the comment on the one. It says that I hope the Easter rabbit will lay you lots of eggs. Now, this is in the days before that Cadbury bunny commercial. <laughs> and they're really hoping that the Easter bunny is going to lay somebody a lot of eggs. 
And this one is dated April 10th, 1911 by whoever wrote on the back. But I'm going to do these as an offer up because they're just a stunning pair in fantastic shape. You just can't find them in better condition than that unless you found them not used. So the pair of German Easter lilies, we're going to do them as an offer up. And they're going to start at $6, which is just I mean, it's worth it just for one because that's what these would usually go for at least seven or eight a piece. Okay, as soon as Katie, because of lag, you know, I don't call, you know, when you're down to the last second. So make sure you keep an eye in the chat. Katie's going to time. As soon as Katie hits start, you'll see the little flags. And then you're off and running and we'll start them at six. But that's easily worth that's that's below what it would be just even for two um but they are in great there is the there is the tiniest tiniest little bit of a faint crease up here on this corner but they're just i'm just amazed that they're not having having been that this one this one was actually stamped and postmarked that i'm amazed that there's no other marks to it that there's no dirt marks that there's no creases and then this one while it was written on the back um it was never posted so this one probably got sent in in uh in an envelope and i believe i'm seeing eight for the pair so they are really fabulous made in germany from 1911 and the colors, the lithograph colors are gorgeous. They're just, they really should be framed together. They're just so, this is for both. This is for both of them. So they really would look great if you framed them together for the holiday, since it's the same artist, but it is for both. It is for both. And they're just such a fabulous set to find. And I'm going to slide them carefully back in their little, their little thing. Yeah, they are, they are lovely. That's why I was like, you know what? These have to be something special all on their own <laughs> because it is not common to find such a nice condition and, and a nice matched set like that is really kind of cool. Belinda Carroll at nine. Now, I have three more Easter ones. They've all been posted. Um, they all have a little scuffing to the fronts of them. So these are going to be a set price. Uh, this one's stamped on the back. The postmark says 1910. And he's written on the back. And this one, this one, there's, there's a little crease here. There's some smudging up in the corner. This one is also embossed, but it just... When you could see them up close, the other one, all around the embossing, all that outside edge was all textured paper. And then it was embossed. And where it was embossed was all smooth. And this, while the lily is embossed, all this is just smooth cardstock. So it's not the same as the others. I don't see... There's a little... Looks like a tiger in the corner for a mark. And then there's that. So these will, these are all together and it's $7 for all three of them. Now this one's interesting because it's all, it's not foil, but it's got a nice reflective silver on it. This also was postmarked, but this one, there's a faint scratch line in the corner here. And then there's there's some little, it looks like from being in the mail, there's a little black dot down here, 
There's a couple of little, I don't even think you can see them, but there's little black faint lines up here. And the third one, and where's my number? So this is, this is, this is six dollars for all three of them, which is a good deal. Um, this one has some wear around the edge. You can see where it was. It was not cut quite right because there's they didn't trim the edge right. These are also embossed. Um, there's a there's a fair amount of wear around the edge of these of this one, and this one is also dated 1910 on the back and was used. Okay, so you get all three of these for six dollars, and it's number twelve. All three of these, it's six dollars, number twelve. Come on, pen, right? And I see Sharon C. Okay, got that one. Now we're gonna knock through these next four real quick because they are for individual postcards. One of them is older, but these are, um, now there's a little wear around the edge on this one, but look at this face. It says, want to be friends on the back, and it is a Bob Taylor, um, they call them plastichrome. So you're getting that nice reflection because of how they printed it, and there's a very, very fine sheet of plastic gloss over it it's not been used there is a a faint little crease here where it looks like something pressed down on it and another tiny one on the dog's tongue but it is a bob taylor postcard it says want to be friends he was known for doing photographs of animals that were all posed shots and but this one is for the collie and chick is just four dollars, which is still usually a little under what the the resale on these is, what the usual sale is. But it's four dollars number thirty one for the collie puppy and the chick. Four dollars number thirty one. Now we have another one. Oh, Belinda. Okay. The next one is a boxer. And it's a beautiful profile. Look at the strength of that chest. Beautiful one. Now this is not a Bob Taylor. This has the Alma mark in the corner, which says Alfred Mainzer. Now, I don't, it's faint, so I don't know if you guys can see this well enough. I think it's whiting out. They always printed it kind of faintly, and it's hard to show you guys the mark. Um, Alfred Mainzer cards are very, very collectible. They're always numbered. They're always named. This is number 851 Boxer. It is an early postcard in the it doesn't have the division on the back, but I can't think of what the dates are off the top of my head. I didn't get a chance with everything that went on with the, with the um, cardiologist today to research the dates because the Alfred Mainzer, they did postcards for a number of years and they're always great quality. And this is um, Alfred Mainzer from New York. So this was printed in New York. Gorgeous, gorgeous boxer. Um, there's there's a little bit of scuffing, which you can only kind of see in a bright light, simply because, as usual, these had not been in a protective thing. They will be when they're shipped to you. Um, but these were in a stack, and that does create a little bit of shelf wear. So the boxer is $4 for the Alfred Mainzer boxer, and that's number 22. 
we have any boxer fans. Four dollars, number twenty-two for the boxer. I need a sip of my tea real quick. This is another Mainzer. Isn't that the most gorgeous Cocker Spaniel you've ever seen? And in the Mainzer collection, this is his dog series. This one's number 858. You got to wonder how many dogs did he do? <laughs> I kind of like the, uh, the, the, the material of the pillow behind him. So, um, so this one, the Cocker Spaniel one, is, is also another Alfred Mainzer card. It's in great shape. It's $4. This one's number 27. $4, number 27 for the Cocker Spaniel Alfred Mainzer postcard. Your sister has three boxers? You know what makes a gorgeous dog is when a purebred Rottweiler gets to a purebred boxer. You end up with, okay, the, um, Rebecca. Okay, you end up with a, um, a Rottweiler body. It has an interesting faced head because the the shape of the snout was definitely the boxer. And he was that gorgeous boxer color over his entire body. And Javier was the sweetest tempered dog I'd ever known for a large dog. Uh, Rebecca. The cardiologist was not happy with me, Angela. He made me do a chemical stress tests while i was there he made me do an x-ray he wasn't happy with the ekg <laughs> i have to go back in two weeks and do the physical stress test and another ekg and they'll probably make me do another chest x-ray then too um he hasn't called me he'll call me tomorrow sometime with the results but he wasn't happy. He thinks there's a little bit of fluid building up around my heart, which is not uncommon in my family for the women. Um, let's see. This one, I've sold these before, but I didn't think I had any left. These are Stolly. Now, Stolly, S-T-A-H-L-I, was a Switzerland publisher who did fantastic stuff in the 1930s. And in the 40s, I don't know if they went into the 50s, um, but they always got artists to do these fantastic paintings of animals. And this one has a signature here. Um, they would always give the artist credit. So when they reproduced their artwork, their signature was part of that artwork. So their signature was always reprinted on the front of these so but look at the coloring i mean you could almost you could just see the light reflecting off of the fur of the coat of that horse it's just gorgeous um it doesn't say now they do number all theirs but they don't always name and it does have its number in the back corner they don't always name their postcards but they are definitely more collectible postcards. And it is, they usually always have really gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. Um, so for the Stolly horse postcard, um, they, these are worth more if you find the Stolly ones because they are older. Um, they are $5 for this one and it's number 21. If that's a paint by number, it's a really, really good one. <laughs> But that is five dollars, number twenty-one for the for the lovely horse, Mary. Mary R. Mary R. I don't recognize the name. Do I have an email from you with your address and um, your address, your name, and your PayPal email? Because I invoice through PayPal now. The next one I have, we saw at the unboxing. And this this poor baby has issues. But I, have you ever seen something that was painted so well in the way they did the face that you just couldn't bear to just, like, not hang on to it? 
Look at look at how he looks up at you. Look at those eyes. He just wants to be loved so much. Look at that face. How can I not try to find a home for that face? So he has more issues. Now, when we did the unboxing and I found him, I noticed that, you know, he's had a, a repair and part of that's the glue line. He had a repair to the tip of the ear and the tip of his tail was missing. But the body in the gloss is just beautiful looking. And I couldn't find, there's no maker's marks on the feet or on the belly. And I don't, didn't notice it until tonight, but he's also been repaired on this leg. And I almost missed it. He's been repaired on this leg as well. But that face, that's just, you know, somebody really managed to get those eyes just right. So he is he is all of he's a dachshund with issues because of those but that face he's just two dollars and he's number eight because i just can't bear to just like not try to find a home for that face he's two dollars and he's number eight and i know he's got issues with the cracks and the missing tip of the tail but he's gorgeous now, I see Rebecca Higgins in there first. I figured he was going to go. I, I made sure he was a price to move. You know, I just am a sucker for when they get a face. Somebody probably did knock him off the shelf. And then they kept him. Because I'm pretty sure this came from the collection of dog figurines from my great aunt. And she would have done that. She would have taken the little pieces and there was, there was a bit of glue here. So at some point the tail piece had been there, but it's not now. And it, I'm pretty sure a lot of those dogs that we found, and I have quite a few in this box tonight were from my great aunt's collection. And she would, anything that any of those little puppy figures that she had, if they had something had happened to them, she very carefully tried to glue the pieces back together and would try to save them, especially if, if the, she loved the ones that had great faces. So tonight's going to be a night with puppies and Easter. <laughs> so now, now we have one that actually came from my mother. This is a planter. Cute little thing. Um, Got to cover up that sticker. No maker's mark. The sticker I'm covering is the number of what it's going to be. This one's going to be an offer up. I could not find a comp for this. And I did find, um, I did find other ones similar, but the prices were all over the place. So we're going to start this and we're going to do this as an offer up starting at $6. Now I'm not finding any chips to the feet. There are some odd uh, little flaws like that. That's not a chip. That's an actual little piece underneath the glaze. So as soon as Katie can put in, um, if she could put in the timer. Is, where is she? <laughs> Did we lose Katie? And I missed it in the chat. But um, but I was going to do that as an offer up because it is such a cutie. There's a spot on the side. She fell asleep. Oh, there she is. Well, they've already started. So <laughs> set a quick timer. We're up to eight. There's a spot here. You could just see it right there where the glaze just, I think the glaze made a bubble. And it just didn't cover. And that from there, you can tell that some of this caramel coloring is the color of the glaze. Now, inside, now you could tell he was used. I could not get that discoloring off of there. There's no, there's no dirt down in there, but it did discolor that one side, and I could not get it out of there. But he's just adorable. Where's my ruler? No maker's mark. Couldn't find anything. 
that, that was this exact one and the ones I did find that were similar to this were all over the place. So he is six and a half inches tall. It's another one with that great little face, given that little, just that hint of side eye. We all, anybody that's ever had a dog knows that look going, you're getting food. Are you getting food? Are you sure you're getting food? Are you getting food? Let me look at you. Are you getting food? That's that puppy look. You're getting something out of the fridge. I want it. <laughs> it is so cute. And that, that was one my mom had. I don't remember what plant she used to have in there, but it would get too big and then she'd have to like take it out and put something else in there. Carefully sit you in there. So what have we got, Katie? I don't know if Simon says got in there before or after. Simon says you're new too. Nope, that's the wrong email. Come here. Zenith Court. I remember that address. Made me think of the old. Um... Okay, there's Chicago lady. And. <laughs> Emails from Wawa. Why are you sending stuff to here? <laughs> Uh, come on. There we go. So it goes to Oh, you're Sabrina Simon. Okay. Um, Katie, is it her or is it Belinda? Because on my screen, after you said 10 seconds, I see Belinda. And then I see Simon after, after you hit stop. Oh, I just, I just prefer to double check. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think Belinda got it. Because I'm seeing the stop before Simon. Okay. Katie, you've had a rough day. That's okay. <laughs> Katie's day was worse than my day. I could tell you that right now. <laughs> and it wasn't even the Jello's fault. <laughs> okay. Okay, now we're getting into some of the, put your number back on, some of the Easter stuff. Okay, where is this one? It's so cute. He's such a little thing. He's got weird eyes, though. <laughs> His eyes are a very pale yellow. And, um... Which is giving him a really kind of creepy Village of the Damned look. But uh, how many of you remember that old movie? The pile is slowly shrinking. Yes. Now, there's a pile over there that you can't see. Though the little, the weird little crochet doll is still here. But there's a mound of wrapping paper behind her because I've got to get all the glassware for the glass sale off of that bureau. And safely stashed because I want to do the glass sale for hitting 500 subscribers. I want to do the glass sale next week. So it almost does look like his eyes are his eyebrows, doesn't it? But he's he's an interesting. He he kind of with all this, and he's got a bow on the back and the stitching. So I guess they tried to make him look like patchwork. But he does kind of remind me of the Nightmare Before Christmas, how the one doll, the girl, is a patchwork doll. And it's hard to see, but underneath he says Dino and 40, where is he? Dino 43. 
I don't think it was made in 1943. The only thing I found wrong, which ear is it? And I can't see it, but I can feel it. There's a little something where it's a little bit rough right on the tip. And I couldn't really see it. I think the glaze chipped off, but it doesn't, it didn't affect the shape of the ear. So I think it's just the glaze came off. So this little guy is $4 for the little bunny. He's number 28. $4, number 28 for the little bunny. The little uh, patchwork bunny with the weird eyes. <laughs> there is going to be some Easter postcards that I have. Not postcards. Some Easter cards that are vintage. And there's a little bit of wrapping paper pieces that were in the unboxing. Those aren't Easter. Oh, there is one more Easter postcard. I just realized that's sitting over there. So, um, who got Bunny? Joel. Okay. Um, Bunnykins. Don't fall over. Stay there. You're not allowed to. Oh, I see. Well, hang on. That's the box for Sarah at Thrift U causing trouble here. It's knocking things over. So I found um, English Fine Bone China from Royal Dalton. It's Bunnykins. It's a nice little bowl, but it's got the most unusual picture inside that I've seen. Those bunnies are in a rocket. <laughs> They're sending those bunnies to space and they're happy about it and dancing around it. <laughs> I have never seen this one before. <laughs> um, I've never, I've never ever seen this pic particular picture of the bunnykins going up in a ship in a rocket. So you could have this out for Easter with the bunnies but you know what? They're waving flags and pennants. It's a rocket going up. You could keep this out for 4th of July. <laughs> now it has um, it has a little wear. Like, I think that's wear. I'm not sure if it's wear or smoke from the rocket. But in a bright light, you can see here and there um, just a few. It doesn't look like it was used often, but there is one scratch in there I can see. Um, down in the grass so it must have been used at least a little bit but yeah space buns <laughs> it's space buns well if the muppets can have pigs in space we can have space buns so so the bunnykins rocket bowl is eight dollars and it's number 20 it's eight dollars number 20 for the little space buns bowl. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's really is funny. And I've never, ever seen that particular one. Usually it's, you know, them just playing around in the meadow or the ones with the mother. You see that one a lot. But I've never seen space bunnies. Gabriel. I thought I saw Gabriel. Gabriel Lish. <laughs> Space bunnies. Um, we have. Come here. Turn around here. Cooperate, little pile. So we have a nineteen fifty three. Teletales book of Peter Rabbit. It has a little wear on the top and bottom of the spine and a little bit at the corners, but the cover corners are still nice and squared, which is a good thing for books. The color inside is gorgeous. There's no writing. 
There's no creases. There's no rips. It is in very good condition. It's just great. The spine's in good shape. So this 1953 Telltale book with Peter Rabbit is $7. It's number 33. Seven dollars, number thirty-three, for the nineteen fifty-three Peter Rabbit book. Skunky junk. Skunky junk. I don't have. You're gonna have to make sure you send me your email, me your information. Actually got a, a couple of emails and they didn't tell me who they were. Tammy did. And Chicago lady did. There we go. All right. So. Skunky junk. Okay. We have that one. And now we have, Katie, you ready? This one's going to be an offer up. It is for a single um, printed in Belgium, uh, Alfred Mainzer postcard. Now, these are really, really sought after, his holiday ones. And this is a bunny ringing the bell and this one's printed in Belgium. So when you're ready to start, this one is uh, an offer up because it's very hard to find any holiday related mains or postcards. The only flaw in this, and I, there is no way I can even show it to you guys. There is the teeniest little pinhole. It's not even big enough hole to have been a thumbtack. I can't imagine other than maybe a really fine sewing needle that would make that tiny little hole. That's the only thing in there. So when Katie starts it, this Mainzer rabbit is starting for $4, but it is an offer up because it's just great. There's no creases. It has not been mailed. It's in great shape. The colors are good. Uh, it is difficult to find any of the holiday ones from Alfred Mainzer. I, I, I've seen I've seen some of his Easter ones go as high as fifteen to eighteen dollars. And some, depending on what's in them, have gone more. I get a kick out of the little mice. Those are some pretty big field mice. Do you see those? If you're near the river, those aren't field mice. <laughs> those be rats. <laughs> but like I said, it is in great shape. And it's the Alfred Mainzer Company of New York, but they printed it in Belgium. And there's, there's not a crease. There's no writing. Uh, when you get this, this will be in something to protect it. But it is a wonderful one. Um, I, I do like it does not have the heavy gloss of later postcards. So it's it's but it is just it's just a lovely, lovely lithograph. And I'm betting the original artwork may have been partially watercolor from the way the gradation of the green is. It's really beautiful. I'm going to carefully slide that in with the other postcards. Which is he? He's this one. So Katie will re refresh and let me know. Helen Casey. Now we have a wonder book. Now this wonder book is from 1957. It is 10 rabbits. That's not a flaw. That's a cloud. There is a problem as often happens is that the plastic coating 
that gloss coating is starting to separate right through here, which often happen with these. Um, it's doing the same thing here on the back. It's starting to bubble up. But this one is 10 Rabbits is from 1957. Inside, it's in great shape. There's no marks. There's no creases. It's got great color. The pages are good. I'm not finding any foxing. So no mildew has gotten to the pages. But it is great. And this one is $7. It's number 17. $7, number 17 for the 1957 10 Rabbits Wonder Book. And these, these old books are great for Easter time because you could prop them up behind things, you know, with the bunnies on them or chicks or anything and have them as neat little decorations. So, Jewel T. Okay. Um, okay. Let, let's get that out of his egg. We have another hobbyist piece. Every time I see anything now with eyelashes like that, it makes me think of Misty. <laughs> it's a cute little piece holding up a very thick, very thick eggshell. It's marked RMD on the bottom. There's no chips, there's no cracks, there's no crazing. Um, it's just a cute little thing, and he's six dollars and he's number 41. No, I take it, yeah, he's six dollars, he's number 41, and I'm always picking this up backwards. And he's kind of tall because up to the top edge of that egg, he's five inches tall. Yeah, I thought he was just adorable. And um, for those who are um, on Instagram and on my Instagram, you saw him in the basket from, from Goodwill because I saved him. <laughs> my Goodwill, a lot of times the holiday stuff, it, they're such, they get, beat up and sometimes you don't find them in the greatest shape and I snagged them because they had they had literally just wheeled it out on the cart and I went oh, mine and just took it <laughs> I wanted to save him because those those eyelashes just got to me okay here is the fun of the vintage Easter cards I did not find many so there are five vintage Easter cards. These are going to be an offer up. So they are going to start as soon as Katie puts in the little racing flags and the timer. I know, isn't that duck just gorgeous? I absolutely adore that duck. Um, there's five of these. We're going to start this at $6 once Katie puts the timer in. Okay, we'll start it at six when Katie puts the timer in. Skunky, is your name Deborah? And Gabriel, you got the yellow egg. Yes, I did get I did get your you're getting that one. Um so these uh, Okay, so we have, and it, the back of this one says Baby Duck. It's printed by Norcross, and somebody wrote 1943 in pencil. Annie Al, that's my great aunt. That was Annie Alice, Aunt Alice. We always call her Annie Al. She was the oldest of my great-grandparents' kids. She was born in 1900. So you get Baby Duck. You get... Thinking of you at Easter with the little angel. You get this one with the little angels. I'm going to hurry before the time runs out because you got to see these last two. Look at that duck. And then this one. Look at all those little faces. I mean, these two alone are just fantastic. Just so great. So 
I just I just love these little faces. That one's great. So who got them? I should have showed them more before they got to the end, but ah. Miss Pamela. How's our Alabama princess doing tonight, Miss Pam? <laughs> okay, now there is um, the bunny bank. So we have this one. This is a bunny bank. It does have his little sticker made in Japan down there. Um, I did find two of these online, not this exact one, but they did come with, however they were painted, they did come with their own fabric apron that's tied. You can take the apron off. It has a little, there's a little scuffing there and on that side. So this is just a cute little bank. And I mean, the slot's in the back. So even if you wanted to just have it as an Easter decoration, it is eight and a quarter inches high. So it's kind of tall. So the bank is $7 and it's number three. $7, number three. It always made me think of the mama from um, Beatrix Potter the with with uh, Flopsy Mopsy and Cottontail. But it's $7 for the Made in Japan Bunny Bank, number three. Tammy Renee. I think Tammy Renee is new to being here with the Night Owls. You call them that because I can't usually, on Thursdays, I do usually work, so I can't start before 11 o'clock at night. And all right. Let's see. I have, all right, we're going to do this first, and then we'll do the last Easter thing, the last, and that'll be an offer up, that last one. And it's a shame Thrift U is not here because Thrift U is going to just choke when she finds out I sold these and Sarah's not here. <laughs> so we have this. Now, I did find out that this is a Lefton piece. It, I need to get my sticker out of the way. It does have a number on the bottom. The number is 3429. And it is a little egg. Now, I thought that the gold around the edge was probably worn off along this band. But for some reason, I'm seeing the other ones that I found online all have that same weirdness in that it's just little lines. It's almost like they, they just dry brushed the gold on there instead of really properly gilding it. So it is cute and it has this lovely little flowers as well as, can you see them? Two little chicks and you've got the rooster and the hen. It's a really cute little thing. And I don't see any chips anywhere and, and no, there's no cracks. And every one of them I'm seeing, the paint is the same way in that like on the the chickens uh, there is a type of hen that is white with the edge to black tips on the and i can't think if they're called bantams my friend leslie would know because she raises chickens and she raises some of these more unique breeds that you don't see very often but this little left in egg box is six dollars and it's number five Six dollars, number five, for this wonderful little Lefton egg box. No, Sarah doesn't like these eggs. Sarah likes these things. <laughs> and these are next. 
So what do we got? Uh, I see Tippy Winks. Tippy Winks. Hi, Christy. All right. Now. <laughs> Now for the one that, that, that I just know Sarah's going to like have a cow that she's not here tonight. <laughs> I found these. And this is the only one. No, the picks are not sold. The picks are coming up right now. So this one, this bunny doesn't have his flowers. See how everybody else has flowers underneath them except that one and this is the only chick so the chick has little yellow flowers they're all plastic they're very long picks let me see how long these are so he these are nine and a half inches long on this one Margaret, are you having a hard time with lag tonight? Oh, you texted Sarah. <laughs> well, these are actually from a company, and I, you're going to love the name, Fruit Art. It, the, the tag is a foil tag. It says Fruit Art made in Hong Kong. Now, I know in the 60s, a lot of stuff started coming out of Hong Kong all through the 60s and 70s. And that once we got into the 80s, that started happening less and less. And you saw more stuff come out of China. And a lot of stuff from out of Hong Kong was some pretty good quality. But they're all, they are all, these are, I guess they'd be like blow mold kind of things because they're all hollow. And they're all yellow, <laughs> but that's the color they were made. Um, the bunnies are a white plastic with a yellow wash and, and little tiny red eyes. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six. There are seven of them. Okay, so there's seven of these. And this is going to be an offer up. Okay, now this one has a bent wire, but that, that could probably be straightened out. So for the Fruit Art Bunny Picks, these fantastic bunny picks. So it's an offer up, and I had to pay up to get them. So we're going to start it. We're going to start it at $8, which is only $2 what I paid above what I got them for. But when I saw these... You just don't find these. These would have been put into florist arrangements because fruit art, that's what they made them for. They made all their stuff just for selling to florists to put in arrangements. I did my homework about that company. So Katie's going to put in the start and they're going to start at $8. You're getting all of them. And they're just... Fabulous. They are just fabulous. And I see Belinda Carroll. Boy, Belinda's bidding like she really wants it. She jumped in there with a 20. So, like I said, the, the only one is this one doesn't have any uh, flowers. There's only one of the chick. And only one of the flowers, only one of the bunnies has the greenery. But they are just a fabulous, fabulous find. I've never found anything like this before. You know, I've never seen them. I've never seen them in flea markets. I've never found these kind of long picks, long florist picks like this that were for a holiday. This is such a great find. And with it being fruit art, then these were probably from the 60s or the 70s. So they are a really great find. So what have we got? 
I, I kind of have to admit, I kind of was hoping Sarah and Michael Todd would be here just because I wanted to watch them fight over it. <laughs> I really wanted to watch those two fight over it. Because <laughs> I know there'd be comments. <laughs> so, Belinda Carroll at 37. And, and just, I, I, there's something special and congratulations because they're just awesome. Now we'll all hear the scream tomorrow. If uh, Sarah from thrift, you sees the replay of this, we'll all probably hear the scream across the country. So <laughs> I should not take such evil glee in that. Okay, let's see. Let's I we found where did I put it? Oh, I put it over here. We found this in the unboxing from last week. Now, I'm trying to remember when we were at the Indianapolis 500. Now, it was sometime in the late 70s that we did Indianapolis. So, Yes, Christy, right? We're all going to hear that scream when she finds out about these. <laughs> but this is a um, little souvenir spoon. It's one of the little shorter ones. So the spoon itself is not, not quite four inches long. So it's just a teeny one. And it says it's for the Indianapolis 500 Speedway. So let me tell you, in the 70s, when they took you around the Speedway, it was in a metal delivery truck that they had cut a big window out in the back and had metal benches on either side. It was the hottest friggin' ride. And they would keep the front doors of the, it, it really was one of those kinds where the, the metal door used to slide open for the driver. He would drive around with his door wide open to vent the heat out of that thing. And they took you around at 25 miles an hour around the racetrack. It's the most hot and boring. <laughs> I think it's more fun now. But um, but these little spoons are cute. If you use um, Stevia or any kind of like the artificial sweeteners because you only need a little spoon. So while they're, they're meant to be, you know, just a little souvenir thing, they're really nice for when you have something like that um, on your kitchen table. You can use a neat little spoon and an old sugar bowl for keeping your, um, oh, not stevia with some of the ones, sweet and low and the, the artificial sweeteners like that. They're good for that. So this little uh, souvenir spoon from the 70s is $3. It's number 36. Three dollars, number thirty-six. <laughs> I just saw that. Make Sarah get an assemblage from you. <laughs> oh, that's funny, Lynn Dowdy. <laughs> you have to send us a picture, Belinda. <laughs> All right, where are we now? Okay, now, last week we found some puppies. And I have the big Dalmatian. He cracks me up because his spots, they remind me of Walt Disney in a way. His spots are perfect. They're all perfectly round. Most of them. It's one or two that are a little off. And he's a big one. Really nicely done. You know, has a, has a nice face to him. Um, I do like that they've got all the teeny, teeny little spots for where the whiskers would be. So, hi, Terry. So, this is a large one. And he's not marked. Oh, yeah, he is marked. He is the one that's marked. I think it's the boxer that's coming up that's not marked. Let's get my number off of there. He has made in Japan on his foot. There is there is some crazing that I can see because I've got the bright light here. 
So there's some crazing down his back, but there's no chips and there's no cracks. Does that face look like he's judging you? Does it really look like he's judging you? So, <laughs> so, so for the big Dalmatian, um, I looked up, I actually found comps of him. He's six and a half inches tall. He's a big guy. So he is $10 and he's number 30. $10, number 30 for the Made in Japan Dalmatian. And they have him really well done. You can see where all the shoulder muscles, I don't think that you could pick it up, but you can see where all the shoulder muscles are. You can see where all the chest muscles are. They've really done a beautiful job molding him. And there's even little indents for the paws. So he's just a great one. So who have we got here? Doggone happy. Hi, hon. Is it true Dalmatians are prone to go deaf? I had heard that once, but I never, never knew if it was right or not. That they have a tendency to go deaf, which is why they used to use them a lot for the um, fire engines. Oh, honey, skunky junk, if your neighbor have one and they bark and bark and bark, odds are they did not train that baby well. And... Skunky. Oh, and Skunky, I forgot to ask you, what's your name? Oh, there you are. There's yours. You're not the one I needed to know. Deborah is the one I needed to know. I have a I have an email from a Deborah Cooper, but I haven't seen the name go by. Oh, okay, Pamela. So around 13, Pamela 13, around 30% of the donations end up with deafness. Huh. Okay. I, so it is true then that they do tend to be prone to that. Now, this was another pup that was in the unboxing, and he is resin. Now, is that a Westie or a Carn, Carn Terrier? It It says that it is... Sweater dog from Kara's Nursery is the sticker. And then it says sweater dog's wildflower basket. So it has two stickers. And he is resin. But he's got a really cute face. And we had found him. I like the little sweater, too. has some neat designs. And we found it last week in a box that I had done an unboxing on. And um, so he must have been sent to my mom from one of the times she was in the hospital with something in him, but there's no, there's some dust down in there I have to clean out, but there's no marks from a planter. Um, but I think he's, he's not a Scotty dog. So, so I think he's, he's, uh, he's some kind of the terrier. He's one of the terriers. I just don't know which one. But it is a cute little planner. He is resin, so the price is going to reflect that. He's five inches tall. He's quite long. He is He's six and a quarter inches long. Oh, okay. Eclectic Thrifter is Debbie, Deborah. Okay. And I greatly appreciate the moral support. I really do. Speaking of moral support, how can I have 77 watching and my screen says I only have 47 thumbs up? Come on, we can do better than that. It really does help the algorithm for a channel too if you give them a thumbs up and make a comment when, um, when it's not alive. Um, make sure you have a comment in the, in the 
replay because apparently that does something for the algorithm for a channel. So that thumbs up that we all keep pushing on, that makes a difference. So this is a Westie and it because it's resin, it is great. There's no chips or anything to it. So he's just $5 and he's number 47. He's $5 number 47 for the lovely little resin planter. He's just such a cutie. He's just kind of looking at going, I just love how he's got his foot up on the flowers going, you're not touching the basket. <laughs> you're just not touching the basket. I don't think he's a Yorkie. His ears aren't right. And he, Simon says, it's a long name to write down. Now, there's another big puppy. Now, this one, he's got glaze all around him, too, even on the bottom, but he has no markings. But he's older. This is another one from the collection from my great aunt. And he's he's really nice coloring to him. They've done a nice job with the eyes. He's looking right at you. He's looking at you. He's looking just right at you. But it's again, they did the molding so nice because you can see all the muscle lines. Even, even on the back, you can see... Um, well, I don't know if you guys can, but you can kind of see where you can tell where the rib cage kicks in. Even on the haunches, there's muscle lines. So he's another really nice one. And he's another big one. So he is $10 and he is number 32. He, I don't always pick this up backwards. Um, he is, that ear sticks up just over six and a half inches tall. But he's another one. No chips, no cracks. And on him, I'm really surprised. I'm not really, I'm not seeing any crazing. But, you know, sometimes you get lucky on that. Um, Terry. Terry. Okay. Now we're going to have an offer up. And I have a surprise on this one that I didn't realize until I was got his hat off. We have this one. Now I've seen him online as um, a hangover dog. And he doesn't have any markings on the bottom. And they kind of... So, like, this little bit of white you see is the glaze. So, I didn't realize at first, and I'm going to be real careful, make sure I go straight up, getting his top off, because his original cork is in there. Isn't that redware? Am I right that that's, because none of this is glazed. Isn't that what they consider redware? So he's he's really cool. Um, sometimes they call him sad hound dog or headache dog. Um, I think it's a hound dog. Cause and he's got this really long tail up the back. He's got now they didn't do it the same on each ear. He's got some black markings on the tip of the ear, but then on this ear it's more kind of mottled. But yeah, isn't that, doesn't that mean he's redware? So he's an offer up. He's really nicely done. The, the water bottle, they put a band of silver and that silver is cold painted on there. So the silver paint is on there um, over top of the glaze, but it's not, it's not really, there's not flaking off. It's all still on there. So this is going to be an offer up. And Katie will start the timer. And we're going to start him at $8. But I usually I see redware. It's little tiny stuff. You know, I'm not seeing redware of anything this size before. So Katie will start her timer. 
and she's going to start the offering at eight. And let's see, see how tall he is. So he is seven and three quarter inches without the top on him. And I, I'm looking, I looked him over pretty good earlier and made sure there's no chips or anything. He also has that little black to the paws to give some definition to the glaze, to the little feet. Um, there's little indents for each of the feet. And he's just, he doesn't look happy. I mean, you can kind of see the mouth. He looks like he's frowning. <laughs> But he's just really cool. And, and the red wear, that was a nice surprise. Let me get that back in there carefully. Come on. He was. He must have been a decanter. He must have been sold as a decanter. And he's really cool looking. And I think I'm about to put that on backwards. Because the way they glazed this, they've glazed that edge. But the back isn't quite as glazed over the edge. So that's the front side of it. And I've been real careful about that decanter. And it fits just right. It's like kind of molded to the shape of his head. So if only he had the whiskey in him now. <laughs> He's just really cool. And in really good shape. And I find it really hysterical because I can tell you right now. If that had whiskey in it, it wasn't drunk by my great aunt. And uh, I noticed, too, like there's the white definition of the eyes is cold painted as well. So who's got it? Oh, Jane got it. Jane got it for. Where is he? For 11. So, yeah, I could use some of that today, too, but I'm I'm out. <laughs> I drank the last of my Highland, and I don't know where that bottle that still had some Glenfiddich is hiding. Because I hid that. I'm not sharing my Glenfiddich with this family. <laughs> Just not. <laughs> So, Terry, yes, I have not. I know you're still interested. Somebody else was interested in a magnet. Katie's interested in the books. With all the chaos about the heater, I have not gotten to any of you <laughs> for invoices, for emails. It's just been nuts. And this weekend doesn't look much better because I've got to, um, I have to clear some stuff out of my house. Terry, you weren't here in the beginning. Philly Flipper, who is another YouTuber, has very kindly offered me space at his warehouse to store things because I have to clear the way for not only in my basement for them to be able to get the old heater out and the new one in, Assuming that I get approved, I don't know yet if the, I'm getting the weatherization grant that will pay for part or all of the new heater. Um, so it's right now it's still a waiting game. And uh, but I'm I'm definitely going to stay behind with with invoicing right now. Simply because I now have to quickly empty my house. Because they could call me tomorrow and say we're coming Monday. I don't know. God, don't, don't, don't. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> they told me it usually takes a week to get a heater if they approve you. So <laughs> I need that time because I have to work this weekend at Wawa. And uh, so I need that time. <laughs> Because I have, I have, uh, so they have to be able to get to all the radiators. And there are some that aren't easy to get to, but can be gotten to. But there are three that there is. N the only way you're getting to them is if I partially empty a room. And that became the challenge because I don't have anywhere to move the stuff to. But Philly Flipper has kindly offered me space because he's, he's not too far from me. 
Okay, let's do some of these old coloring books. And for those of you who are into junk journaling, I've got a starter book for you. So this has got some interesting cover art. And inside, there's, if this is just cardstock. I mean, it's even got the cardboard color on it. And um, each page has one of the same images in the same colors that was on the cover, but everything is this graph paper. And there's nothing, there's no maker's mark, there's nothing. I don't know who made it. Now, there is a little rust starting on these. So, good night, Melanie. Good night, Paul. <laughs> I'll be sleeping soon because <laughs> I actually have to pack some stuff up to go to Paul's. Uh, so, um, so, this little graph book is just $3, and he's number 25. $3 number 25 for the interesting little graph book. Because you can, I mean, you, you've already, it's almost like a starter kit for junk journaling. You know, you've already got it partway going there with the pictures. Let's move that over so they don't get creased. Come here, you. We have to get that paper over here. So, Belinda, Belinda, now we have, we have a 1959 fun with words and pictures. This one has not been used. It looks very much like a first grade book. Um, the only flaw I'm finding is that there is a crease down here on the corner. It's got a whole page of suggestions to the teacher. Um, so this one is $5. It's from 1959, the Benton Review Publishing Company of Fowler, Indiana. So it's $5 for number 46. So far, my tissue box just decided to take a hike. You stay up there. I need you. Okay, so we have that one. And then and then we have grade two which is all day activity book. This one's from 1963 from Edward Ernest. And this one has more detailed pictures. Oh look, night owls um, of things to do. There's mazes, there's easy crosswords, there's uh, Number lines. How many of us remember doing these to learn your numbers where you had to draw the line from number to number? I kind of like the fact some of these old books, which are far more creative because you don't see this in coloring books now, but the old ones used to have these things like this where they would they would teach you how to draw because they'd show give you the basic shape and then show you just simple line drawings teach you how to draw. So, dot to dot. I like how this one even has changed the faces. You can change the face. But it hasn't been used. This is an all-day activity book from, this one's 1963. And this one's $5, number 37. And then we have... Now then we get to the fun because now we're getting to the coloring books with the cool covers. <laughs> Do I have 600? Am I up to that again? We thought I had hit 600 subscribers the other day and it got to 600. 
And then it just dropped again to like 597. <laughs> oh, I'm at 600. Awesome. 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 That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and now it's sending me a notice that Vintage Vinny has posted a video. So <laughs> got to get that out of there. Yay! 600 on the dot. Now, hopefully YouTube won't take any of them away from me by tomorrow. <laughs> 600 a second time. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm slowly getting there. So that's a good thing. And, and there, I know there's several of you like that the names went by, um, who saw Trisha's email and, and donated to my heater fund. And I thank you very much for that. I, for those of you, I have addresses for, I wrote thank you cards. I have to do a, several emails for those I don't have addresses for. So I will be saying thank you very much because that is an absolute blessing having that, that buffer. Um, because I know there is a little plumbing work. Even if they pay for the whole heater, there's a pipe that's got to be replaced that feeds the heater, which they don't do. So um, what you have donated is certainly going to help me get that pipeline fixed so that that's not a problem with getting water into the heater. So... You thought about doing Utah? Utah? It's a lot. It's a lot of work. Um, and and I haven't always found time to do it either. <laughs> As you've seen that I have had more lives than I've actually had videos in the last two weeks. So we have this great one. Great cover. And this one... The big, the big book, which was 1964. This one's from 1964. And this one's only going to be $5. And usually, like, these are worth a little more. But there's some issues in this. So there's some weird discoloring on some of the pages. And I can't figure out from what. And then there's this page, which has a little bit of yellow crown. But I can't figure out, like, it's weird because usually foxing isn't in the middle of a book. Usually the foxing, you know, that just looks like to me like somebody spilled something on the page. And I did find out, like, this box of, of coloring books that I had gotten, all these vintage coloring books. The woman they came from, her mother had been... um a first grade teacher and she used to mimeograph the pages of what she wanted the kids to color. And she used to do kindergarten and first grades. That's why she had this stash of coloring books, which it's great. I mean, I, I just like, sometimes it's just fun to decorate with them if they have great covers. So this one's $5 and it's number 10 for that one. Um, You know, there are a lot of sellers on YouTube, but YouTube's huge. YouTube is huge. And everybody has different things. Um, Philly Flipper doesn't necessarily have vintage stuff. And he sells a lot of his stuff on eBay or Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I have some more modern stuff and pop culture stuff. I put tend to put that on um on ebay and then save the vintage stuff most of the vintage stuff gets saved for you guys let's see where else we have another one this isn't this isn't our usual crowd for the coloring books i see tonight so we have keep busy happy time fun this one has one page that's been cut out but everything else is in great shape and there's no other problems with that. But this one also, the Keep Busy one is $5. This is from 1967. It's $5, number 44. My eBay name is the same. eBay, Etsy, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. 
<laughs> yeah, I haven't done anything with TikTok yet other than watch other people's stuff. They're all this overstuffed house and it's all one word. Keeps things simple that way. And what's the last one? Oh, the last one has great cover. It's the same picture front and back. This is the vacation coloring book. And I really kind of half think about saving this for just having it for like decoration in the summertime to have that just like sitting out on a shelf. Um, but this one's also from 1963 and I have a little pink piece of paper. So there's got to be an issue. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. So the only thing wrong with this is somebody did do the part where you do the graph to draw the lighthouse. So that's it. There's nothing else wrong. They even have games because they have one which is some... So it, it sounds like you take a button and it sounds almost like tiddlywinks and it's called Shoot the Crow and the instructions are on the bottom. And you're supposed to kind of like snap the button with your finger and knock the crows off the scarecrow. You're supposed to hit the crows. So it actually has some games in it too. And then it's, I do like the image. They're nice big images, turnips and, and celery. And so this one, this one is really cool looking. I love the cover art. Um, this one is also just $5. It's number 23. Yeah, I, I try to pop in. If I'm at my laptop, I'll pop in to some of the resellers. And for it to matter to the YouTube algorithm, you have to watch at least minimum, I think, is 30 seconds. You have to watch at least 30 seconds. That might be for the ad revenue. Um, skunky Junk. <laughs> that is such a funny name. Skunky Junk. Because, you know, every time I say, say skunky, I keep wondering, am I going to have skunks in the backyard again this summer? <laughs> so, um, uh-oh. Do you ever have one of those brain derailments where you wanted to say something and your brain just went, nope? <laughs> well, it couldn't have been that important then, right? <laughs> brain just derailed immediately right then <laughs> my mother used to call them brain farts <laughs> i was mid-sentence too and the brain just <laughs> oh about the uh, algorithm um four channels to be promoted by youtube without them being over a thousand it really, really, really matters how many thumbs up they get, how long you watch. So you need to watch at least like one or two minutes of, of their live or their video. And um, so it, it matters a great deal. It also matters how many comments they get on their videos, um, which is why you're seeing ones like Misty, I know lately has said, go ahead, drop a comment. Go ahead, leave your channel name in the comment and drop your link in the comment. But it won't let you drop your link, I don't think, in the comment section of somebody else's video. But you can put your name in. You can do that with mine, too. I have no problem. Um, and you and I have no problem posting links of other channels in in my live chats or during the live sales either and and i know um there is a usual decorum of you're not supposed to promote your sale during somebody else's sale when we get to the end of the sale i don't mind that once i'm done i don't mind that promoting a channel i'll let you guys promote your channels anytime in the chat because you know we all it, that's the biggest way to get your name out there is to get uh, get it into the chats and, and mention that you have a channel. Now, let's see. Where are we? We're up to the paper. This caused a lot of oohs and ahs when it did the unboxing and showed this. 
So it's going to be three lots. And they're going to be three offer ups right in a row. Now they're not, the first two are not full sheets. The first one is sheets from the 70s. So if you do junk journaling, um, if you just do any kind of other mixed media art or decoupage, you're going to love this because you don't find like something you're, it's, it's easier to find Christmas wrapping paper than it is to find wrapping paper from anything else. So we're going to start. I covered my notebook. So we're going to start the offer ups for this at $5. And you're going to get three separate sheets. And they're all partials. So Katie will put the timer in. And you're going to get this piece that is April showers. Can I tell you how old this is? Because I remember this paper. This paper was for the first grandchild when I was only 10. <laughs> so this stuff is definitely from the 70s. This stuff's from 1975. <laughs> so you get that. And every time I look at this, I don't look at this and think boy or girl and baby shower. So that's probably what it was for. All I could think of is that song, Tick, Tick, Tock, Little April Showers, which is in the Alice in Wonderland Disney. So you get that piece. And this one is oh so 1970s. It does have a tear on the fold there. But you get this wonderful crossed ribbon. So you'll get that with it too. And then if you do miniature work, always oh, upside down, you get this big sheet and look at what's on there. Look, oh, it's still upside down, isn't it? No, I got it right side up. There's owls. There's all these little tiny thumbnail pictures, which would be great. I mean, you'd be able, It was it in Bambi? Okay. Um, but you'd be able to cut these little things out and use them for so much stuff. So, so these are all of the three from the 70s. Okay, so we have Belinda for that batch. Come on, get on there for five for that batch. Okay. And they, they, the last one's from the 40s and pretty cool. Uh, Belinda. Now we've got some 1960s paper. Now this one has, if I can get them to separate here. So we have, we have, now this one, this is also offer up. It's going to start at $5. Now this one has some tape marks. There's a piece of old tape here that's all yellow. But look at the cool picture of the bunnies. The whole little scene of bunnies on a yellow background. Now there has been, this isn't quite a full sheet because there has been this piece cut out. So when Katie starts her the timer, this one's five. So you get that, but then you also get two pieces of this one, which is absolutely darling. Look at that is just fabulous looking. Now that's the smaller piece of that. There's a bigger piece. There is a bigger piece of the babies. And the babies are just so stinking cute. They are absolutely adorable. They are so adorable. So you get those three sheets with the bunnies and then the little babies. Um, 
and and the, the little babies just kind of make me think of the, the there's a book called the root children and they're all just like miniature children and they, they just play around underneath flowers and stuff i like that they're taking showers and this one's naked she's half naked what's going on there <laughs> I think, I think Miss Pamela just come in there right at the end and snag them. But aren't they so cute? They are just so adorable. Miss Pamela. Now, the last one's from the 1940s. Now, I had, not everybody who's here was at the unboxing last week. In the 1940s, some wrapping paper was, um, it basically, it's a little bit thicker than what we would consider tissue paper. And it is a circus print. You got the little girl with the dog. And this is going to be an offer up because it is rare to find this in one piece. And this is a full sheet of the circus paper. And it is thin. It's, it's a 1940s sheet of wrapping paper. And it's the whole sheet. So, and there's, there's no holes at the fold line. So when Katie starts, the timer this oh i take that back there's a hole there's a little tiny hole on the fold right there which i just saw so when uh would she really <laughs> she's not here tonight i don't think um but yeah i was so surprised to find this but it is it is really early it is 1940s wrapping paper and it's just got such great pictures you got you got a clown up there. So Katie, start your timer. And it's starting for five dollars. And there we go. But it yeah, it's it's a rare find. And I was I was trying to look up some of this early 1940s paper and and a lot of it online depends on the artwork. I didn't find anything that was a circus. And you have you have there's another character. Where is it? I thought there was cuz you have the little girl and the dog. Okay, there he is. He's uh, there's on the backs on this side. There's another little clown there, and there is another clown right there. But it just they're just so cool, but so rare to find. And I thought, well, this this has to be this has to be an offer up and be something special. Um I did see one thing at somebody's Pinterest post where they took a piece of this vintage early wrapping paper and they had it as the background. They had a big piece like this in a frame and they had it in the background and they had um, all these pictures of their kids carefully mounted in front of it, which was pretty cool. Nice way to use it because then you could enjoy it. And let me carefully put that little number back on the corner. I use, I learned my lesson after uh, Auntie Christy. I learned my lesson. I had been using painter's tape. And painter's tape actually lifted a little bit off of an old postcard. So I use, uh, it's called washi tape. And it's, it's from... Um, it originally came from stuff from Japan, and uh, they now sell it in Home Depot. Bloody expensive, though. So I got a roll of it because it doesn't stick as much as even the painter's tape does, so it doesn't hurt stuff. So, Auntie Christy. Just 
It's like in my house, you never know what I'm going to find. And let me tell you, one of the rooms I have to empty was my old bedroom. There's going to be some 1980s stuff showing up, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, dear. You had it on your postcard. I forgot to take it off, didn't I? Off the postcards you got. I try to remember to take it off before I send the item, but apparently... <laughs> Apparently, I forgot. <laughs> so, we have just a few more things here. We have just been whipping through, too. We're almost, I'm almost out of stuff. Oh, and I do have, and I didn't know if anybody would be interested in them. I did look up and price those religious Sunday school books from the 1800s that we found in the box last week. So if anybody's interested in them, let me know and I will put them up with a price. And the other book was the Ruby Yacht of Omar Khayyam that, uh, is, that I looked that up too and found out it's worth something because of the illustrator. Peaches. I don't remember peaches. What were peaches? I just know that if I get into that trunk and I find any more 1980s Lisa Frank stuff, I'm selling it on eBay in a heartbeat. Because I just, just cleaning out my desk drawer, I found a bunch of uh, Lisa Frank's um, stickers. And I made a fair amount of money on old stickers. So I found this little guy who was made in Taiwan for the Russ Berry Company, which we usually just think of them as Russ. They have shortened the name at some point. He's a cute little koala, says happy birthday to a special friend. He's just a cute little thing. He's from 1979. He has all his info on the bottom. But, you know, he's just such a happy little koala. And for spring, if you had him up and then had some little thing in front of him. You could have him as a cute little spring decoration with all his little flowers. Even the back is all painted nice with the little flowers. And um, so he is $6, the koala, and he's number six. $6, number six for the happy little koala. He does say happy birthday to a special friend, but he is really, really cute. He's from 1979. Um, I'll put him in there. He's holding up papers over in there. So Belinda, right? Belinda. I still have from the 80s, because I remember you could get sticker books that you could put your favorite stickers in. I know I still have mine. I filled at least three and then found some more that weren't as big. So I, I was still filling those sticker books up with my favorite stickers until well into the 90s. And then I packed them away because I moved out and then I moved right back in. So, so they may be in that front room. Okay, now we found some itty-bitty dogs last week. Come here, where's your baby? And I'm selling these together as a pair because I don't think it's right to separate them. They're, the way they're painted, I think they are definitely made by the same company. So I really kind of think it's like the mama and the baby. You know, because they've just got the same kind of face, the same kind of coloring, but there's there's no maker's mark on them. So I really think that they are the same place. I don't believe they're Hagen Ronecker. I didn't look that up. I usually put the Hagen Ronecker pieces online. But uh, so this little pair of mini spaniels of some kind there's no chips. They're really cute. They're $6 for the pair and number 39. $6, number 39 for the mama and little one. T. 
Terry. There's a visitor outside. I wonder which one. There's a window right there, and it leads right out to what we call a wood porch, where we used to keep all the firewood in the winter. It's actually a stone floor brick porch, but something's crawling around out there. Probably the raccoon. Could be the possum. Too early to be the skunk, thank goodness. And they don't usually come up onto the porch. So some of the old sticker books are highly collectible. I know if you find anything with Lisa Frank, they get crazy money for them. Um, but some of the old sticker books, I could see where they would over time start becoming more valuable, the ones that are full of stickers. Because, one, they're a little time capsule. But if you think about it, how much money are people paying for vintage scrapbooks that have old Victorian trading cards in them or old postcards or even scrapbooks from the 50s that have old greeting cards and cutouts from the movie magazines? They're going for hundreds. So I could certainly see why... Um, uh, certainly see why sticker scrapbooks would start increasing in value because they are the same kind of thing. It's, it's, it's a little time capsule of things. <laughs> you need to go through all my boxes <laughs> or all your stickers. <laughs> oh, Auntie Kay has some great, great unboxings. You're a scrapbook paper collector. That can be fun. That can be fun too. Come here, you. All right. I have this little thing. I don't know where this ever came from. It's nice. Now, I can tell from the wear in here, it, it had a tie through there at some point. Now, the handle seems a little wobbly, but it's not coming out of there. And there is a little wear, like, around the edge. Not a lot, though. It's still pretty glossy. So I suspect this is more, you know, that 1970s when, you know, that colonial look was real in. But somebody actually did use it a little bit. So we have this little wooden scoop, which is eight and a quarter inches long it's a nice piece of wood and it looks like it was all really nicely carved out i mean this is this is a really nice line here so this is five dollars for the wooden scoop and it's number two five dollars number you know, Bob Ross never sold him any of his paintings. He gave some away as gifts, but he's never sold any. His widow still has hundreds of his paintings. A live sticker unboxing. <laughs> I could just go through my desk drawer. <laughs> I used to have, well, at one point, I think I had about 60 pen pals. And I do miss that. Um, I had pen pals all over the world. Almost married one of them. Uh, but that's another story for another night. But um, I, I have a box still in my drawer that's nothing but stickers. You know, all just loose stickers. And by now, they probably don't have any glue left. But I'll still use them. That's what glue sticks are for. So... I know they wanted to start a museum or there's something about an exhibition being sent out to a museum that was on the news right before Christmas. I have, um, not that I ever used it for scrapbooking. I have a lot of stuff that you normally would use for scrapbook because I used to make my own greeting cards. When I would do a different show um or a different gilbert and sullivan operetta i would make special cards up for the directors for the cast to sign and 
So I have a lot of that stuff at somewhere. So at some point I could probably do a wholesale that was just on scrapbooking supplies, rubber stamps and stuff like that. I have to find it all first. But <laughs> Let's see. Oh, okay. This, come here, you. Come here. Come here, come here, come here. So this was a goofy little thing that I picked up. And you saw it in the picture from the Goodwill. And I could not find anything about it. I mean, they're obviously playing music. They're drummers. It's all hand done. The blue kind of flowed a little bit. And it's got a mark on the back. And they went to the trouble to make it like a little artist palette. And it says Madeline 1963. Madeline, Madeline. <laughs> so it's it's a really cool picture so i didn't know um if anybody would be interested in that it's kind of big it would make an interesting trinket dish if somebody's into music you know or somebody plays the drums so this is six dollars it's number 38 and it is a hobbyist piece. It's from 1963. It's very different. It's seven and a half inches long. And, um, but it's $6 and it's number 38. There's no chips or cracks. It, yeah, it kind of is the shape of a croissant. Um, Terry, I thought Terry got the wooden scoop. Simon says have it before. I see Terry is coming in first for the wooden scoop. Oh, Terry wants Terry wants the dish. If I learn how to spell T E R I, <laughs> when I start inverting letters, man, boy, then you know, I'm just getting tired. Those chemical stress tests, they can, they take it out of you just as much as we're running on the friggin' treadmill does. With my knee, they can't, they can't make me run because the knee is all screwed up. All right. What did I do with them? There they are. Okay, so I have two metal horses. Now, this one, I can't tell who made it. I can't tell if it's Corgi or Britons. And it doesn't have all of what it should. He's hollow, so he's kind of light. He does stand on his own. And he's got some paint loss. But you can see on either side, there's a little hole right there. He should have come with a wagon. He pulls a, is it a beer wagon? I've forgotten now. But um, he's, he's really cute. And he's just an older metal horse. Um, considering that he's hollow like that, he's made in Great Britain. He's definitely led, though, because I had to, to make him stand properly, I had to very carefully maneuver the one leg. Now, you can tell it looks like he was dropped. There's a little flat spot there. So he's led. So, because otherwise he shouldn't bend like that. Because Corgi, at one point, started making things uh, early on with, with some lead to it. And they stopped doing that by the 60s. So he's a little older, um, but he does have a fair amount of paint loss to him. So he's $4 and he's number one. $4, number one. He's got things that are interesting to use on little trinket, uh, not trinket shelves. Horse pulling a wooden wagon. Yeah. But, you know, those little curio shelves, they're fun to have them on there. If they're the right size, we used to have um, 
And I still have a lot of metal people from the old Lionel trains. I'm not giving up my people. I can't even get to my people. They're in a little glass case hanging on the wall in that front bedroom that we have to empty a path to the to the radiator. <laughs> now this one, he's heavy. He doesn't have a maker's mark. He's solid. He's got some weight. But you could tell on the legs. Now he's probably more of a 1940s, 1950s horse. You can see though he's also got some paint loss on the on the legs. Now, because he's older and he's the kind that, that the collectors are looking for, that solid metal ones that they did in the 40s and they did for like the, the 1940s Lionel train sets. So he's six dollars and he's number 34. Um, there's actually the only thing I have set, and that was if, because I know there was interest at the unboxing, um, in some of these 1800s Sunday school books. So those were the only thing left that I had pulled. Um, that was it, is just the four, those four books. That was the only thing I had left. And that's also going to Terry. Okay. Carefully put him back in the tray. So I don't know if the people who were looking at these were uh, are here tonight. So it's not like I can't sell more. I still have little animals and things sitting next to me that I never. Skeleton keys? I'm not giving up my keys. <laughs> I have some old keys, but my great grandfather was a clockmaker. I mean, he was a jeweler, but he also did made and repaired clocks. So I, I do have some old keys, but they're they're part of my personal collection. So you're you're probably not going to see skeleton keys come up for me. <laughs> so one of the books we found um was this one and it was a prize so it doesn't look like much right you see books that look like this they usually are meant to be slip cased and um they this one doesn't have a slip case and they're usually a small private printing so this one somebody wrote <clears throat> George Sackers, Mount Alto, 4755. Now that's in the, that's actually, I think they screwed up because they wrote that and that's actually the back. <laughs> this is the front. And they wrote it again in the front. And then there's this great quote up here, which I cracked up at last week. It says, Misfortune is a filter which separates sincere friends from the scum. Wow, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> but it is a copy of the Ruby Rubyot of Omar Khayyam, done into English by Edward Fitzgerald, with illustrations by Paul McFarlane, Mount Vernon, the Peter Pauper Press. So from what I could find out, this was a small printing. They even tell you that the book is set in Baskerville type and is printed on specially woven paper. And I don't know if I didn't find a date on you, did I? Did I find a date on you? No, I did find this book online, though. But. It has one flaw that looks like something got in and crumpled, crumpled, put a little tear right there, but it crumpled this part of this page. But the pages are really pretty, and the illustrations, if I can get one open here, they look like they're that uh, woodblock printing. And they're all done in this nice red, 
And I don't think you guys can see it, but all this part is also illustrated. And I think the bright light is just washing the illustrations right out. I don't think you guys can see it because the paper is a gray and there is this great um, thing of flowers going around the borders. There's a bird up here. There's flowers here. There's a per there are people down at the bottom and their different poses on most of the pages have something just slightly different on quite a few of them but it was a, it was just a small printing and online if you had the slip case and didn't have anything like that one page wrong with it then it's worth about fifteen dollars but for this one because of that one page and i don't have the slip case if anyone's interested in this then this is seven dollars for the Omar Khayyam. It's number forty-two. Not one seven, if anyone's. Um, and then we've got. Let's do this big one. This one cracked me up. What? <laughs> Pamela, oh, Pamela went live or Pamela went love? <laughs> I do have some other little critter things next to me. We could do these. So there was, like I said, there was some interest for some of these old books. Now, it this one kind of got a couple of us because... It's, it's all embossed on the cover, and I had a real hard time. It's a commentary, critical, experimental, and it's basically got the, the title all around the side. But if you look at this side, it was part of a set, and it says, Critical and Experimental Commentary, Volume 4. But it's experimental commentary on the Bible. There's an inscription in the front from 1868. And come on, open up. It's commentary on the Old and New Testaments. And this one was printed in Glasgow. So it was printed in Scotland in 1864. And it is, it goes through Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Lamentations, and the book of Amos, which, okay, I probably need to explain that. The book of Joel, the book of Amos, and this is the kind of book where you would have had to cut your pages. It's uncut, which means they never got that far. They used to like leave the folds in. And you would have to trim and cut. That's why you used to have a paper knife. You'd have to actually cut your own thing. You'd have to cut the pages open. So the book of Amos and Joel and all that, I don't believe that's in the American King James Bible. But the American King James Bible does not have all the same books in it that are in the British King James Bible. Because the Puritans didn't agree with some of those books. And in here's your history lesson. In the early time of our country being settled, the only way they agreed to allow Bibles to be printed in the New World was if they printed their version. So it became law about that, too. Yes, and I know the Catholics also have different books, but I have a copy of the Catholic Bible. I've seen those. <laughs> I wish I could get my hands on a British King James Bible. So, uh, so this has some books in it that aren't necessarily um, in, in what we're used to. But, uh, yeah, the 1611 one has them all. But not all, if you get 
one of the, the the historical ones, but you don't have all of them over here. Um, but if anyone's interested in that, um, this one is ten dollars. And you can shoot me an email and let me know. Because um, it is only volume four, so it's only got a few of the books in there. But that one's from the 18... They're all from the 1800s. So I'm going to show them to you. And because, um, like I said, there was a, there was a, quite a bit of interest that night. And I don't know that those same people are here tonight. This one is called The Biblical Treasury. Cute little book. I like the embossing on the edge. Well, not the embossing. Well, it is embossed, but then they gild it. And this one is the Biblical Treasury, a collection of scripture illustrations for the use of Sunday school teachers and Bible students, volume three. And the only date I could find was in that emblem, which says 1803. And the, the cool part of this one is you do have these old pen and ink, which is what they would do in the 1800s. You have these old etchings. So that's your, your, um, that's your illustrations in here. But they really are broken down to little stories. And they're really short, like. This one's anticipating evil, and it's, it goes up to here. It's just a paragraph. And the hermit bird. Um, so that one's also just, they're just little paragraphs. So some of these, this is the Siege of Jerusalem by Assyrians. So some of these you can, uh, yeah, they're great images. So if you do still teach Sunday school, even with adults, having a resource like this would be really helpful because they didn't, they didn't water nothing down back then. <laughs> they did not. Oh, nope. Doesn't say it. So this, here's the second part. So what this is, is they have consolidated two, two volumes into one, which is why the three and the four. Um, but it still just says 1803 Sunday school union, old Bailey, London. But no, no dates anywhere. And it's in pretty good shape. The binding's really pretty good. There's no writing in it. I'm not finding any pages that were anyway. And this is another one. It's ten dollars. So, um, so if if you're interested in this, I can give it a number. If anybody, uh, I sat it on top of my thing. So this one, if anybody was, it's ten dollars. It's number fourteen. If anybody's interested in that one. Well, I know you, do you want that one too? I know you want, did you want the big one? And then now this one, these two crack me up. Okay, so you do want that one. Okay, yeah, so you want the big one, and then Doggone Happy wants the small one. Okay. No, I don't have any more offer-ups, Katie. And I know you've had a rough day, so if you want to go to bed, I would completely understand. <laughs> So I'm going to be getting off soon anyway because I'm running out of stuff. I got a few other little critters I could put up, but let's do the books first. This is another one that's International Sabbath School Lessons. This one's from 1880, and it's missing the front. Uh, it's missing the front end paper and the first protective page that might have had an illustration on it because they usually would put an illustration opposite the title page. This one was printed in Boston by W.A. Wild and Company. Well, we know that's not going to be Oscar Wilde. <laughs> the last thing he would do would be something that was Sabbath. 
Um, I don't really see a lot of photos, uh, photos, a lot of etchings in this one because they're little, they're little pictures hide, hiding into the um, text. But what I, the, this is more for adults. Like the other one you could use with kids, but this one, definitely these, I have two different years of these. They're definitely more for adults because they also got library references in there. They've got, everything's broken up with little stories. The story part of it goes, they have the, okay. So they have the verse across the top, but then they have all these little numbered sections with different questions that you could ask for discussion that are tied to the verses that they put at the top. So, you know, I spent five years in Southern Baptist run Christian schools and used to do my theology homework with the Catholic boys I grew up with that went to St. James Catholic boys school. Can I tell you how many discussions we had of theology? A lot. <laughs> so, so that that's there's not like I said there's there's really not a lot of pictures. It's a lot of text, and this one is the one from 1880. For I'm gonna mutilate this name. Pelo Betts Select Notes on the International Lessons. P e l o u b e t apostrophe s. Good night, Katie, honey. Sleep well. You deserve it. You've had a rough couple days, too. Um, so this is the 1880 one. And this one is $10. And this will be A. This will be letter A. If anybody wants that one. And then I have another one that's a little later. This one's 1886. And it's the same thing, though this one has uh, a, somebody's artwork that says Bible class from Philadelphia in the front. Okay, so I see, let me refresh here, but I think it's doggone, I think got in there first. Refresh, change to live chat. Okay, so doggone, so Jane got it first. And then there is, um, well, this one actually has a thing with a map in the front. This is the one from 1886, and it's, it's probably different lessons, but it's the same type of thing. So this one is going to be, well, let me write 1886. So this one's going to be D for $10. The 1886 version of the same book. Well, the 1886 lesson plan. So that one is also $10, but it's D. Lynn Dowdy. I'm glad these are going to good homes because it's kind of hard sometimes. These these have such great stuff in them. And I have I grew up reading some of these things. Because, you know, they, they were there. There weren't many books in the house. <laughs> so if I had books I could read at my great aunt's, I would read them. There are some religious books I'm still looking for. Now, everybody's heard of Louisa May Alcott. But they don't realize how important her father, Bronson Alcott, was. And there were books that he wrote that I'm still trying to find and get my hands on because I want to read them. Um, he was the first one to bring a kindergarten to the United States, and it was in Philadelphia. Louisa May Alcott actually was born in Philadelphia and lived in Germantown, and when she was five or six, they moved up into New England. So I have a lot of her books. There's a whole series called Aunt Joe's Scrap Bags. I'm still trying to find. I only have three of those. I'm still trying to find some of those. The baby will be born at your sale tomorrow? Oh, 
Oh, Jane, your sale tomorrow. I may or may not be able to stop in at that. I know you you told me you're doing something special. You you look like a little kid on Christmas morning when you said it. So <laughs> I want to stop in there, but my timeline to actually get some sleep tomorrow is all over the place because Philly Flipper has cleared some space at his warehouse for me to get some stuff out of this house, out of the way, so that the heater techs can get to the radiators because there are three that uh, they're just totally inaccessible and I've got nowhere to move the stuff to. So I've got to try to get at least one car load over there, still have enough sleep to work the night shift on a Friday night at a Wawa. And let me tell you, it's been crazy at that Wawa. They tried to call me in tonight and I'm like, no, no. <laughs> We are near refineries in Marcus Hook, PA. And because the refineries had problems and were shut down in Texas, they're working double shifts trying to pick up some of the slack for the refineries up here. And in Jersey, in New Jersey, on the other side of the Delaware River, they're doing the same thing. So that makes the Wawa the nearest food source for these guys in the middle of the night and in the evening. So... We've been real busy. So I might not, I might be asleep at three o'clock. Cause isn't that the time of your sale? Three o'clock. You know what? I'm going to go find your channel. And, and if you guys still want to see a few more things, I have a few. I got a Norcrest frog. I got some magnets. I've got a kitty cat, a weird little pig. <laughs> Let me find Jane's doggone happy vintage. I love the picture of your puppy. That's so cute. Copy. Walmart? No, I'm at Wawa. Wawa is a convenience store chain that, uh, not, not, not a Walmart. <laughs> okay. So here is doggone happy vintage. Here is the link for her channel. Um, she's having a sale tomorrow. I, am I right that it's at three o'clock? Your, is that your puppy you're saying is rotten? <laughs> oh, your puppy's sweet. I've never actually seen your puppy except for the pictures you have on your channel there. But <laughs> My spoiled little princess is probably sleeping on my bed because I can feel a cold draft. And my bedroom has no heat at all. It's on the north side of the house. And it, we keep the door closed because if you're out in the hallway, you can feel the cold air just kind of cascade down the stairwell from that room. Because <laughs> that room has one of the old chimneys in it, too, which basically is just a big box of cold air. But it doesn't go all the way up because my father pushed it off the roof one when, when they redid this, the roof of the house once and rather than repoint the thing he just shoved it off and let it crash to the ground and put the roof up over top of it so it's just a big square of air right by my head too <laughs> but you know so relive vintage I don't think I know you. Rel Relive Vintage. Okay. So, but yeah, there's the link for Doggone Happy. She's having a sale tomorrow. I think at three. Oh, she went into labor, your daughter, and is going nowhere fast. Yeah. 
I can understand that. Not that I've gone into labor, but I'm the only one of the six children my mother had that the doctor insisted on. She had a different doctor for me. He insisted she didn't know what she was talking about, and he wanted to go on vacation. So I'm the only one that was induced, and I put that poor woman through 36 hours of labor. I felt so bad when I found that out as a teenager. <laughs> I'm also the only one out of six kids not on or within a day of a holiday. I swear I was due to come out at Halloween. Mom swears I was due on Halloween. Nope. <laughs> I came out on the 27th and that after 36 hours of making her, her and that damn doctor wait. So <laughs> my poor mother. Yeah. I feel sorry for, for Jane's daughter. She's still... That's a long time. So do you want to see a few more little things? I mean, I usually go till 2 a.m. We've got a few minutes. I've got a few more things sitting here. <laughs> I know we found we found these last week. I sent one to Katie. Katie had a thing about friend mail that she showed. And I found some of these. Now, this one's definitely... Remember in the late 80s, early 90s, when all that pop art came out with faces and then they'd have the bubble for the for the um, caption? It says, darling, let's share it all. Our dreams, our desires, our deepest thoughts, the vacuuming, the laundry, the cooking, the cleaning. So it has a little scratching, like there's a little scratch right along there. And it's only, I mean, they made these things. It's just glued on the back. And this is all particle board. <laughs> but it is, it is just a funny, I mean, this used to be on my file cabinet in my bedroom since the late 80s. So if anybody's interested in having some, you know, late 80s pop, pop art kind of magnet, it's all of $2. $2 and it's M. <laughs> so two dollars and it's letter m if anybody wants the 1980s pop art magnet <laughs> um oh seriously okay <laughs> the one i found though was just a woman reading a book and it had this little pug on it and i had to send that to katie because it looked just like her little Louie. Now, these are from Hallmark Cards. These are also magnets. And they're teacup and saucer. But they have the, the little copyright thing in the corner there, down there for Hallmark Cards. And uh, I used to work at a Hallmark store. So that's probably when I pick these up. And they're they're nice and cute, but you know, I had enough magnets still around. I had so many that these would all at some point got tucked into the desk drawer and weren't on the the file cabinet anymore. And the file cabinet still has about 20 magnets on it. So these four and it would be oh uh, they're Hallmark and they're in great shape. So three dollars, three dollars, um, letter F. Three dollars, letter letter F for the teacup magnets. If anybody's interested in those, Auntie Christie. You're redoing your refrigerator with my magnets? <laughs> That's okay. Um, another thing I have is I have this little thing. It's a little cutie. Has a little foil sticker on the side that just says, what's it say? Besides Japan. Genuine Bone China Japan. It's really kind of goofy that they put the sticker on the front. Oh, the pop art's going on the dryer. <laughs> but it's a cute little kitten. 
I like that she's got the little paws up. You could actually like put her up against something because her, her front paws stick out further than her feet. So you could actually like kind of put her up against something and she'll look like her paws are resting on it. But she's such a little cutie. And she's, she's two and a quarter high, but she stands really well because the tail sticks out. And the tail is nice and flat with the bottom. So she stands pretty well. It doesn't, doesn't flop over. So, so the little, the little kitten, the kitten made in Japan, um, she's in great shape and she's $4. And she's going to be letter K. $4 letter K for this lovely little bone china tabby. And she's in great shape. And it would be packed very carefully because with the way the tail extends, I don't want anything to happen to the tail. Okay. I see Auntie Christy. Sit you over there in the little dish. Okay. This says Japan. It's one of those anthropomorphic things where it's an animal all dressed up. And it's it's little Miss Pig here. She's got her little she's got her little purse hanging down, a little string purse. She's got her little kerchief over her head, tied under her chin, little jacket, little skirt. There's little bits of gold to, that have lined all the creases to make little accent lines. But they only did it on the front. And it's, it's got the, the older print mark of Japan. So I suspect she was probably some little carnival giveaway. So little Miss Piggy here. She's one ear sticks up. This ear sticks up just a hair over four inches tall. But she's in good shape. There's no cracks, no chips, no crazing. But I've no way of knowing how old she is. Now that red just kind of rubber stamped, I've seen that a lot um, right after the war and and a lot you start seeing it in red during when things are occupied japan so it doesn't say occupied so i think it's right after that period but she is a cute little piggy um so she is being that she's older than the kitten she's bigger than the kitten so she's also far more unusual because there are people that just collect anthropomorphic animals but we're going to just make her a little more of a deal. And are her feet, I'll be darned, her feet are pig feet. So her feet actually only have the one little split. She doesn't actually have little toes. Well, she's got two toes, I guess. She's actually got little pig feet. So she's, um, she, well, we'll just make her $5. She's $5 and she's letter P. Five dollars. I know that's a steal, but why not? Five dollars, letter P. She is a cute little thing. I just have more stuff that I can't even... I don't even have time this week to try listing anything on eBay. <laughs> so, but she, she is cute. All right, I see that. I'm going to make an executive decision here because I know you may not have been able to tell that I said P instead of B because I'm getting tired and I know after having had the mini stroke, it sometimes when I'm tired, my in pronunciation slurs. So I'm going to give that, I see Sharon C is the first one. So I'm going to give it to Sharon, even though she has a different letter, because that is very possibly my fault, because I can't pronounce that well. 
when I'm tired, this side of my mouth, um, for those of you who probably didn't know, I had a mini stroke five years ago um, from some medication. And this side of the mouth gets real tired. You know, my therapy was chewing gum. It was really bizarre to me anyway. <laughs> um, but that was my therapy was chewing gum on the side that was mostly affected. But it, it worked, you know. So just be real careful when they give you high levels of ibuprofen. Especially if you're fat. Can you imagine? I'm, and I was only 50. I just turned 50 the month before. And they kept telling me, well, you're too young. You're too young to have a stroke. And then the nurse asked me flat out because I'm from Chester. She said, well, you had to have taken something. Really? I took nothing but what was prescribed to me. But I'd taken it for a month. And apparently that's really long time to be on that high a level of ibuprofen. What else do I have? I don't have anything down there. All the books are out. I do have... Frog. He is Norcrest. He has his original label. Now, he would normally be part of a band. I have never found the rest of the band. And he's not from a house in the family. So now he even has a paper label on the back that says hand decorated. So I, uh, so I don't know. Um, he's how much he should go for. I know the band has four. There's supposed to be four of them, but I've only got the one. Nice horn player, and he's in really good shape. And he's got not one but two of the original labels because he's got the Norcrest one on the bottom, and he's got hand painted there. And yes, he does have three little dots. He's sitting on, that's a leaf. And there are three little red dots in there that are berries. And there's, it's hard to see, but there's a log. It's all because they're all green. Um, there's a log there. There's some more leaves around here. I think just as a single frog, he's really cute. But it's really cool to find a Norcrest piece that's got all the labels still on it you know usually they're you know they're missing the labels and he's got his a409 i think all of the frog band have the same a409 number but he's a really good find and he's just kind of been you know sitting on a curio shelf ever since i found him but i'm not that big on frogs so oh sorry but he is um he is Norcrest. He is he is definitely worth it, but he is seven dollars. So he is seven dollars and he's going to be L. L L as in Lily, but he is seven dollars for the Norcrest frog. I like how he's even got his finger. He even has his little webbed fingers are actually where they would separated like there would be fingers over the flute hole or a clarinet. That's a horn. So. No takers for him. And I have one other little critter. That. Um. This is a, I know Misty always says, oh, you can put an air plant in it. You'd have to have a really tiny air plant for this little guy. He's all that lovely luster wear, beautiful coloring. And, you know, he's got some little tiny flea bites around the edges of the ears. So that red, that red was cold painted. And the red is flaking a little on the ears. And the blue on the collar is cold painted. And that's, that's 
in better shape. Do you think? Because there's no, I thought maybe it'd be a pin cushion, but there's no sign of any glue that was in there. And I know they used to, my great aunt had, they, I swear Annie Floss kept every little carnival thing she ever got. And um, I will be getting these out, the invoices out in a few days. I just know that tomorrow there's so much going on. I'm not going to be able to do it tomorrow. Um, I'm really hoping to get invoices out on Monday because this weekend I've got to try to be trekking stuff over to Philly Flippers Web Warehouse. Yeah, he might be a French bulldog. You know, I mean, he's just, he's a little cutie. And I really was, um, I was thinking of putting him online because he is the luster wear and he's probably from the 1930s. Well, he can't be 30s. 30s would say Nippon and he's got Japan on the bottom. So he's got to be after the war. I like how he's like the little face. There's this little dot. And it's almost like he's got a little beauty mark. You know, <laughs> so, so he is a cute little thing. Um, but I know in the 30s, they used to make these little pin cushion things. Yeah, he's got that 30s look. So I'm wondering if, when did they start using Japan? I forget the dates of when it went from Nippon to Japan. So he could be 30s. He's definitely got that look. He's got the right kind of early luster. See how he looks kind of silvery? That early uh, luster wear has a silver reflection to it. And that's the really earliest stuff. So when you see the early blues in luster wear that look almost like a silver gray, that's the earliest of the luster stuff. So, um, hmm, let's, he's so cute and he is an early piece. So let's do him as, oh, I was going to do him as an offer up, but I can't time because I film with my phone. Well, we can do a timer as soon as my, as soon as my laptop thing goes. So we'll start him at four. Four dollars. We'll do him as an offer up. And as soon as my clock here flips, we'll start. And I do understand that it's going to be hard because um, I the lag between me and you is going to make some problems. Okay, 201. There's the start. And... We're going to star. That's the start. We're going to offer him up. He's starting at four. You know, now there is a little indent back here. That's that's a manufacturer's flaw. That is not a chip. He's really, for something as old as he is, he's in great shape. It's just the cold paint around the edge of the ears. He probably was a pincushion, but there, there's no glue residue. There's not even roughness. This is all nice and smooth and glazed. He's really adorable. And uh, he's from the tip of the back leg to the tip of the ear. He is three inches long. Such a cute little thing. And my clock just flipped for the other minute. So I'm going to type in stop. And when that shows up, we'll see who got it. Stop. <laughs> I can't type. I see that. <laughs> wow, I can't type. <laughs> stop. Stap, stap. <laughs> I'm getting punchy. Can you tell? This bit of sleeping like four hours at a time and then having to get up and do something. And 
I took a two hour nap tonight because I'd only slept four hours last night. <laughs> and now I'm getting punchy. <laughs> All right. So I refreshed and I see Lynn. 1930s puppy. And I see Lynn for seven. And I did refresh the laptop. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Does that sound almost like I'm from Boston, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, Katie would love this. She sees the replay. She's going to crack up. <laughs> we star and we stap around here. <laughs> oh, man. And there was nobody for the froggy, so froggy can, froggy can go up another time. So, well, it's 2 a.m. Time to call it a night. <laughs> That's three hours of this. And I have, to, I have to really keep an eye on my StreamYard time because you only get a certain amount of free time. And I might have, I don't want to accidentally, <laughs> I don't want to accidentally like not have enough time for the end of, when I get near the end of the month. So, um, Mary Beth on <laughs> Fatbird. You're right. Oh my gosh, you're right. Stop. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> well, it's good. We're leaving things tonight on a laugh. And uh <laughs> so I um so about next week. I'm planning on doing the glass sale. I don't really have enough yet, but I need to get that off of there. Um, and and now, I, you know, that was be for 500 and now I've hit 600 a lot faster than I expected to. <laughs> so I'll, I'll do the glass sale next week unless something happens with finding out about the heater. Like if, like if the heater comes on Thursday, if I find out that they are definitely doing it, um, I'm going to be so busy that day that I will not have any time to prep for a sale. So, um, so I'm going to kind of leave it up in the air of what happens for next Thursday. Cause so much, so much is up in the air until I know definitely what's going on with that heater. I just know that, you know, I need to make sure I have the space for them to get to things and I can't wait for that. I got to do start doing that now. And it'll be good to be able to go through stuff. So. Uh, <laughs> that's the challenge, Auntie Christy. Having help to move stuff. Um, Paul and I were talking from Philly Flipper and I were talking today. And one of my challenges is the fact that like in the dining room, a lot of that is bags of fabric it's not boxed stuff from my mother i kind of just haven't wanted to deal with it <laughs> um so i have to now and i've got to get all that boxed up and i got to be careful because fabric gets heavy and mike works third shift and then he's got college in the mornings he does school online so um you know so, uh, it's going to be a challenge. Now, if I get stuff boxed up, Paul said that he could come over with his box truck and take stuff. The problem is, is where I, right now, I don't even have room to stack the boxes. <laughs> but we'll get it figured out. I have to work together with Mike. Uh, we're going to get the first car load out of here tomorrow. And then hopefully on Saturday, we can get a couple of them. Oh, daughter calling. Go, go, Jane, go. Maybe it's news about the baby. Fingers crossed. So, so, yep. Um, I am, I am so grateful too for the prayers, for the, the donations that were sent to me, um, for the emails and moral support for somebody that suffers from depression. You have no idea how much that has helped keep me on an even keel to have the moral support and I thank you all very much for it. And, um, 
and and the the donations also were uh, have been amazing there's um well it's just under a thousand but the money that i make at the live sale is also going to pour into all that so that i can take care of anything they don't because they they can cover anything from half of the heater which then would leave me with trying to figure out where i'm getting three or four thousand dollars or they could pay for the whole thing i just don't know um i hate not knowing i really hate it for something like this because my finances are so finely tuned that i hate it <laughs> i need to know ahead of time this stuff so so that's where that stands and thank you all you know depression runs in your family then you know just how much it can suck and it's not just being sad it's being exhausted it's being headaches it's it can be physical body aches it's just a royal pain um in a lot of ways so yeah it runs in my family as well so do you like that your fi my finances are finely tuned yeah i know where every penny's got to go i know what every debt i have is i know what every interest rate is and yeah but you know it's i used to joke around that i used to rob peter to pay paul so often that uh, peter went into witness protection so <laughs> That is part of my stress. 2020 has been really, really rough. I went from, well, not just 2020, but um, six years ago, I got downsized out of a $32,000 a year job to making half of that, to making $15,000 a year. And then whatever extra I could by doing flea markets and throwing things up on eBay. And then um, 2020, I did my taxes and I found out I only made nine grand last year at my job. Part of that was because I started the year off injured and was out on workman's comp and then was out because of COVID because I got sick. And um, so, and then when I've gone back, um, I've had such a problem with my side and now with my knee that I've only been working five hour shifts. So some weeks I'm only in for five hours now, or I'm only in for 15 hours. So in a whole week. So that's why 2020 happened and, and everything else happened. So that's what I started my YouTube channel a year before I had planned on it. But I'm not the only one out there and I'm not the only one that's inherited a ton of stuff and doesn't know what to do or they've sent what they could to the auction house like I did and all the big stuff. And then you're left with all the little minutia. What do you do with it? Well, if your finances are tight, this is what you do with it. You know, I, I had it in the early days, Belinda. Um, I had it in March. And I um, got very lucky because when it hit, it hit in the space of four hours from the time I woke up to the time I was in the ER, I was sleeping on my stomach. So instead of all that mucus filling up my lungs, the back of your lungs have all these little pockets. And what, co what it does is it creates all this mucus that fills up those little pockets, and then you start getting deprived of oxygen. So, because that's the job of all those little air holes. So if they're all clogged, you can't breathe. I was sleeping on my stomach, and which with my back, I fell out of that big tree I cut down. I fell out of that as a kid, and I damaged the small of my back. So sometimes when that really bothers me, I sleep on my stomach and I had been doing that. And so when it hit me, it went into the front, into the bronchial tube. Let me tell you, it is no fun, even if they sedate you for it, for them to have to put a vacuum cleaner down your throat to clean out the gunk out of those bronchial tubes. Because when you wake up, it hurts. <laughs> it really hurts. <laughs> everything is so sore it's like when you have really bad bronchitis and you have those horrible coughing fits that make everything ache can you imagine you go 
to sleep and you wake up and it's suddenly like that. But that they were able to get a lot of that goop out. Um, and and I had a they, in their words, I had a mild case of it because once they did that and then had nebulizers, I was back out of the hospital. Um, I, I was only in overnight. Once they had a nebulizer system delivered here, they got me out of there because they they wanted the bed for people that were in worse shape. So I, I was lucky. I got over it, but I got it, and it went into the bronchioles. And it does create an awful lot of mucus into your lungs. And that's why it creates such a problem for people to breathe. And it can still be a problem. I had the fatigue for months afterwards, which I think is probably part of the reason I fell in my garden when I had fractured my hand and messed up my knee um, because of the fatigue. You know, you just get tired out. That's still a little bit of a problem, but it's not quite so bad. It's more annoying the fact that my knee is still screwed up. But that's... uh. Yeah, I mean, so anybody, I have people, I work in the armpit of my county with a, with several people who blatantly will tell you to your face how wrong you are for having to wear a mask while you're at work. Um, I can't stand that one guy. Uh, because he, like, makes ig ignorant comments to us because we're required to wear the mask for our job. And he tells us we should just how we're all just you know, brainwashed and all this nonsense. And I'm just like, dude, you have no clue. I had it. You have no clue. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's probably good to hear some people talk about it so that you know how different it can be for other people. Um, I know at the church that I used to do the cleaning at because the churches are closed down. The church secretary, she and her husband both had it. He's 10 years younger than her, and he passed away, and she didn't. And she's 70, 72, and he was six. Well, yeah, he was 10 years younger, and he didn't make it. And it's all how it affects your lungs and everybody's everybody's a little different on how it reacts to them so so everybody you know wash your hands wear your mask wash your hands is a big one even getting through flu season washing your hands you pick up if you handle money at all <laughs> if you handle money at all as your job or even just buying stuff Money, your cell phone, your car keys, your credit cards. These are all things we never think of cleaning up. And they get touched a lot. And in flu season, any kind of cold season, you just make sure you wash your hands a lot. And this thing isn't much different in that. They're all saying about a mask, and I get that. But washing your hands has got to go with it a lot. We do that a lot at work, and our store um, has not been hit by it. And a lot of retail places have been. But where I'm at, haven't, because we've got management that really pushes it, that, you know, when your hands start drying out, you know, you've, you've probably been washing them enough, but you should have your hands dry out, because if they're not, you're not washing them enough. Yeah, I mean, it's just a survivor pin to wear at work. Yeah, yeah, because I love the ones telling me you're brainwashed and it's all fake. And I'm like, yeah, you tell me that after I've been in the ER. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> what are you going to do? You know what? Some guys are just so obnoxious. You can't live with them, you can't deal with them, and you can't bury them in the yard because the dog will just keep digging them up. So what are you going to do, you know? <laughs> so you guys all stay well, stay healthy, 
Uh, we'll all be waiting here for doggone happy vintage. Uh, if she's a grandma by morning, her sale tomorrow is at three o'clock Eastern time. And, uh, I don't, I don't know. She said she's doing something special at that sale for me. And with what, how my schedule just cut change with trying to get some sleep, get stuff, get up, load my kid's car when he gets home at eight 30 in the morning. And then I, if I cannot, I can't meet Paul to get this stuff over there until about one o'clock in the afternoon. I have to be at work at five. So we're going to load, get up, load the car try to sleep for another three hours and then uh, and then get this over to Paul <laughs> and then work that night. So I may not be at her sale at three o'clock to find out what she's doing. She's up to something because when I stopped in at the end of her sale, she said that, that she would have something special planned to help me out. And she was grinning like a kid on Christmas morning. So she's so tickled with herself about what she, whatever it is she's doing. Um, I can't take time off, um, because somebody screwed up and used up all my time off on me. They were supposed to use just a little bit back when all this started, like certain, just a couple of hours each week. And she put in all of it and put it, even when I came back to work and they were doing it all that time and I didn't know it and it siphoned off all my time off and your time off is like in so many places in retail work your time off is acquired by how many hours you work and when we get things going again I need to have enough hours for when I take time off for boy scouts for summer camp because I always go to summer camp that is my vacation come on how awesome is that boy scout summer camp Okay, all the kids are at Maribadge classes in the morning. So in the morning, I get to sit and read for at least three hours every day. I get free use of a pool, an archery range, a rifle range. I can sit in on any merit badge class I want to learn about stuff. I spend my afternoons helping kids with their merit badge work or just talking to the kids. And you know, and I don't have to cook. I don't have to clean up. It's awesome. <laughs> I love summer camp. <laughs> so, uh, so my time off now, I have to reaccrue some so that I have some in case we are to the point where we can go to summer camp the end of July. Oh yeah. My son, I already talked to him before he left for work. He are, he's going to help me load the car. He'll get home. He'll be done work at six. He's going to go to the gym. He'll be home about eight 30. We'll load the car. Um, I'll be warm tonight. Cause I'll be sleeping in his room. Hi princess. And um, I better move that in case she hops up. So yeah, you need to create a summer camp for yourself. That's the perfect way to do it. Check out your local state parks. Cause often state parks have cabins that you can rent at a really, really reasonable low price and give yourself a week off <laughs> you coming up come here come say hello before we leave come here do you want to come up come here the doctor is here come here stand up come on oh you're gonna go under well come here stand up come here come on stand up that's a good girl that's my girl this is the doctor. Some of you I don't think have seen her. I know. I have you turned kind of cockeyed. You're usually, yep, there we go. She's not, I don't have her sitting right. <laughs> she's not happy unless she's like got her head up on my shoulder. Yeah, sometimes I can tell when like she's worried about me is she'll actually put her head down and sometimes she'll go to sleep. She was the runt of... It's a girl. Um, she was the runt of four kittens that were born in the shed next door. And there was the doctor, Rory, Amelia, and, um, and Davros. These are all names from a British science fiction show called Doctor Who. She turned out to be a girl, so but she kept her name. 
Amelia turned out to be a boy. So Amelia quickly got named to Pond, which is Amelia Pond's full name in the TV show. And Pond and Davros were the two boys that were all white with black markings and short. And I managed to get those two adopted. She was a scaredy cat. She wouldn't go near anybody but me. So we kept her. I'd always wanted a black cat. But as she got bigger, she got that little patch of white on her chest. And then um, Rory was a tuxedo cat and long haired, but black like her and had a big, huge white V. And I never could catch Rory. And Rory, I, I figured after three years, well, because she's been here six years. And when Rory did show up uh, the following year after River Song, it was the mother. I'm pretty sure River Song passed away. Um, this little fart kept chasing Rory away. So I've never been able to catch Rory and Rory disappeared. Rory showed up again um, just last week. And I know it's definitely that cat because I have a certain whistle I make. And I used to do it when I take the food over for them to come out of the shed. So she answers to that whistle. That's how she knows to come in. That's how she knows when her dinner's on the floor. So I did that and Rory came running from the yard behind us and couldn't get over fast enough, but still was afraid. And Rory stopped within 10 feet of me and sat down and just stared at me. No stray cat comes a running to a whistle. This cat knew that whistle and came right over and it's got all the same markings and these incredible white whiskers on a black fur body has beautiful, long white whiskers. So I know that's Rory, but the minute this one saw him outside, just chased again. And it's so big. I'm pretty sure Rory's a boy. So, Oh, you had a kitty that was 14 passed away in June. All our animals always find us. Cats tend to do better when there's a pair, but she was not happy with Gandalf. She doesn't like adult cats. And uh, we'll see what happens. Usually our animals find us in our family, so we'll see what happens if there'll be another kitten at some point. I don't really want a kitten with as full as this house is. Mike wants a dog. I don't really want a dog with as full as this house is right now, but we'll see what happens. You know, it's been a long while since we've had a dog, so I don't care what we get, though, but we're getting it as a puppy or a kitten because there needs to be some training going on. And I think it'd be easier for a little Miss Scaredy Cat to adjust to a baby animal than it would be to a full grown one. So... Yeah, we had a senior dog uh, named Verona, and we only had Verona for three years, and she was a senior dog that we got from the shelter. We went just to look. Mike wanted to just look, and that dog was a long-haired dachshund, beautiful little thing, and would not leave the bed, just would stare at everybody that came up. All the other dogs are yapping their brains out. And she just laid there. And they said, we don't know what we're going to do with her because she won't respond to anybody. She's just very depressed. And all we know is that the owner had died. The family didn't want to do anything with her. So they just, they just dropped her off at the SPCA. Mike sat down on the floor and called to her. And the dog put her head up and actually came over to the, to the, um, to the cage to the edge where he was sitting of uh, the kennel and they were dumbfounded because the worker there said, we've never seen her respond to anybody. So I quick said, can we take her out? Can we put her on a leash and take her out for a walk? And this little dog would not walk for me, but the minute Mike held the leash, Oh yeah. She went right outside and we get out there, she did her business, turned around, sat at, her, at his feet, looked up at him, and he's like, I don't know what she want. And I was like, I think she wants you to pick her up. 
or or wants attention. So he picked her up and she just looked up at him, put her head up, licked him under the chin, and then put her head down to go to sleep in his arms. And if a dog does that, you're not leaving without that dog. <laughs> She had Mike wrapped around her little paw from day one. So it was just to go look. And we ended up with this sweet little senior dog. And, and that dog was so quiet that, you know, I don't think that dog would have had a problem with the doctor or the doctor with her because she was a quiet little thing. But um, it's always hard losing your fur babies. They're family. But there's so many fur babies out there that need, you know, they need a human. And it's so special, too, if you end up chosen. Like, Verona chose us, and she chose Michael. And that was really sweet, because that was his first dog. So, I want a Shiba Inu, but the only rescue I know of in the entire country is in Washington, D.C., and Shiba Inus are not an easy dog to get. They're a, they're a Japanese breed. Well, I know where she's sleeping tonight. She just crawled into the dining room. She knocked something over out there. She probably knocked over the big cardboard box that I have sitting there that I need to fill tonight. So, so we've gone and talked for a half an hour. <laughs> I do need to get going. Um, I need to get a light salad to eat and see if I can pack a box or two. And then I need to get to bed because Mike's going to be here at eight 30 and wake me up and we'll load his car. And then uh, we can load it quick enough. Then I can go back to bed by nine 30 and sleep until, uh, sleep until noon or 12 30 and then be over to see Paul with a carload of stuff. So, oh, sorry. My stomach's growling. So, good night, everybody. It's been fun. It's been a great sale. Go go to Doggone Happy Vintages sale. I know there's a lot of sales, and everybody has their favorites. And um, But stop in at Doggone Happy Vintage. Her sale starts at 3 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow afternoon. And even if you just stop in for five minutes, you know, to give a thumbs, I do that a lot. I stop in and just give a thumbs up and, um, because I know it helps the channel out. But like I said, I know she's up to something and she's just so tickled with herself and I know it has something to do with me. I may not be able to stop in. So, um, so the least I can do for her is to send other people over. She does find some neat stuff, but she is just a riot to watch. She reminds me so much of my nanny, of my mom's mother, um, that she's, she just cracks me up because she is just the sweetest little thing. Um, so she's a trip. <laughs> so you guys have a good night and, um, I'll, I'll, Keep you posted on, on the saga of the heater. Um, I know I will have a warm room tonight because I'll be sleeping in Mike's room because his is the only bedroom that actually gets any heat at the moment. But uh, at least it's better than it was. You know, the house got down to 48 degrees at one point before they got that thing running again. So... That was no fun, I can tell you. So good night, everybody. And if I don't, if you don't see me in the chats tomorrow, everybody have a good weekend. And you know, I'll I'll keep you posted on YouTube and Instagram when I know anything about what's going on with the heater. But in the meantime, I'll be working this weekend to try to get as much stuff packed up and over to Paul's as I can. So good night.